construction in Oklahoma City when he saw Logan Duncan standing in the heat with a sign in hand. When Jones stopped to ask the youth what uh, he was doing, Logan said that he had been driving down the road when he noticed that someone had ran over the stop. <laughs> He later posted a photo to Facebook where he garnered thousands of appreciative responses and praise up. from social media But most importantly, team, he you're going to need to refinance that tailgate and the truck gets attached to you. With no a refinanced auto loan with Alcoa Tan Federal Credit Union with their got that promotion, they'll give you up to $500 for your debt. Are you serious, coach? That's right, Johnny Alcoa Tan will pay you up to $500 for your debt. Now, let's get out there and spread the word. Say it with me. Alcoa Tan. When I made the move to my own studio, I was worried about this. I was worried about that. I was worried about, hey, did I get this piece of equipment? Did I get that piece of equipment? Does that sound good? Does that not sound good? One thing I didn't have to worry about, that was office furniture. Because office furniture outfitters met my furniture needs. With a 50,000 square foot facility, they have East Tennessee's largest selection and are the best value for new and used office furniture. Located in Knoxville, it's easy to find everything you need for your new space, including desks, file cabinets, chairs, conference tables, and more. Office Furniture Outfitters is turnkey. They came to my place, we mapped everything out that was needed, they delivered, and get this, set everything up. To learn more about what Office Furniture Outfitters can do for you, log on to OFONOX.com. That's OFONOX.com. Deep down the middle's got his man, and he's gone. Jason Swain, touchdown. It's time for the Swain event. Guess what time it is, my, my, my time. You can check your iPhone, better say it's side time. With your host, Jason Sway. My man. Real sports talk for the real sports fan. All of you chumps are going to bow when I whip him. It's time for the Sway event, fueled by Dead End Barbecue. Give me two of and a red flag. Woo! <laughs> Friday is the best day of the week. It is here. Time to start the weekend right. Start it off with the Swain event. We really appreciate you joining us here on 850 AM, 100.9 FM, uh, Rocky Top Sports. You can stream us live at SwainEvent.com. You can listen to us on the go using your Swain Event app, free for Android and Apple devices, or watch us live here at Swain Event TV. Driven by Toyota Knoxville and ToyotaKnoxville.com. Ben McKee, Charlie Burris on a beautiful Friday morning in East Tennessee. Three minutes past the top of the hour. SEC Media Days. It's over. It is over. Not over yet. Hey, the, the last media member left uh, yesterday. It's me- over. Media Days isn't over until Friday around lunch when they release... The predicted order of finish and the SEC um, media teams, all SEC teams. I want to be last. I do wonder if it'll if it'll drop here in the show. Hopefully, the one know. of the directors from the SEC said it'll be this morning. Chuck. I don't know when that means. Yeah, Chuck Dunlap said that. So I hope that they're picked to finish thirteenth because the last oh. time a Tennessee team was picked thirteenth, it's right where we want to be. Ended baby. up well. Yep. Yeah, I want to be last. I want to be last. I think if I if I had to Don't. predict, it'll be what probably probably second to last in the SEC. Yeah, twelfth or thirteenth, or you know, may, maybe uh, ahead of Kentucky, but in the East, I know they'll be ahead of Arkansas, Kentucky. Yeah, yeah Kentucky, Vandy, Arkansas. Well, they'll, they'll probably split be. the divisions though. That's true. They well, will, yeah, they, they and they always do about that from. One to fourteen in the yeah. SEC. I mean, I I really don't care. I mean, it doesn't matter. I saw a stat <laughs> yesterday that 
the SEC media members have gotten it right six out of the 26 years. Yeah. And I, two of them were Alabama in the last couple of years, and that was so difficult to pick. I mean, I don't, I don't expect them to get it um, right from top to bottom. The teams that are struggling, they usually get those guys right when it comes to football picks. You know, hey, instead of being – at the bottom of the list, okay, you beat the critics and you were second to last. Woo, boy. I mean, the teams who are going to struggle, I mean, I, that's pretty well documented. It's teams that uh, lost a lot of players. It's teams that, you know, may have new coaches and, and lack of depth and things like that. Tennessee is not going to be one of the top teams in the SEC. Not going to be Auburn, Alabama, or Georgia. But it just it just doesn't matter that much. And I'm telling you. Sit back. I want everyone to sit back and watch the reaction. Just watch it. Just watch the reaction. Just sit back and watch the reaction. It's gonna be it's gonna be phenomenal. I everyone was saying I, I mentioned last night that uh <laughs> when when I saw that there was gonna be announced in the morning, I said, get ready to be mad in the morning. And then I had probably three or four responses to that tweet that said, um, I think I think we're good as an underdog. It's exactly where I want to be. That's where I want to be. I I mean, in no way are they going to pick Tennessee in any sort of top spot. That's just not going to happen. But I think that it, it just always seems like, at least in this era of Tennessee football, everything just goes better when the expectations are low. <laughs> Yeah, the most the most interesting note about the SEC media poll being released is where Mississippi State will be because I heard several people yesterday on interviews say that Mississippi State is the second best team in the West over Auburn. Whoa! So and that I believe Marcus Spears I don't know has about Mississippi that. State making it to the SEC championship game. Man, so this, I, this, I am interested to see where they end up. There's plenty of evidence to point to Mississippi State. Doing doing very well. I mean, you have a a, a, a de- defensive front that's really good and deep. A f- yeah, a few guys had an opportunity to go to the NFL but chose to uh, return. You have a quarterback that is poised and 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 experienced, and he can make plays. You, I mean, you have a ton of players who are developed and experienced. So yeah, I mean, Mississippi State is is. In position there, I mean, they're prepared to make a run. I, I can see that happening. They'll give Alabama a nice run for their money, and uh, we'll see what comes, what happens down uh, in the fourth quarter. They but, have in the SEC the most returning starters, seventeen of twenty-two coming back. Yeah, I mean, I, I see, I see why mm-hmm. Marcus Spears picked uh, Mississippi State. Yeah, I just, I, I, I can see why he would pick them number two in the West. I don't agree or quite understand why he would pick them over Alabama. He went, he went, he went on a limb. And yeah, I don't play. I kind of like calling it. a shot, yeah. you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I don't have a problem with it. I like, like a genius if he's right. Yeah. I mean, it's like when Cole Kubelik picked uh, NC State to make a run, you know, a couple years ago. And and um, Alabama, I think, has the least returning starters in the SEC. Yeah, that don't I, matter. Let me check. <laughs> yeah, nine. They, yeah. Is, uh, they are last in returning starters, so. Yeah. Yeah, but but yeah, yeah, like you said, hopefully <clears throat> things will break their way this year. <laughs> oh, no. Man, I hope something good happens for Alabama. That you know they don't get those breaks often. Golly, man! <laughs> Golly, freaking Alabama! O- only two returning stars on defense, though. I, I think you know you can stack that with five stars, but but you can't inherently give these guys experience. Like that's not something that you can coach into them. Uh, and so I. That's by the by the end of the season, I think they're going to be a monster. The same but they thing. could start off slow. I could see. You got to catch, catch them early. Same thing people say every year. You have to uh, catch them early. But but that's been true. Ole Miss plays them third game of the year and is able to beat them a couple of yeah, times. One year out of the last. Yeah, but that's it's held be, true. They beat them twice. Yeah, they yeah. beat two years in a row. You got to catch Alabama early. If you're going to do it, you have to catch them early when they're working the bugs out on offense. Um, but you but if you don't catch them early, it's tough. Now Auburn's been able to beat them late, but. It's not it's not easy at all, but yeah. Alabama will be good. They will be one of the best teams in the SEC. Let's not even worry about that. But as far as Tennessee being preseason ranked high, it just doesn't matter. Who cares? Young athletes, they work better when the back their back is against the wall. 
period. We work better when people tell us what we can't do. Because you're still fighting through maturity. You're still needing to understand that just because everyone tells you how great you are does not mean you've done anything. Compliments does not equal results. Compliments doesn't equal results. And at the pro level, you see teams who are picked to win early. They go out there to handle their business most of the time because they're they're mature, they're professionals. College is different. You got the people telling you how great you are. You got your mama and your daddy. You got your friends. You got your classmates. You walk around with your chest out. Uh, walking around on campus, you're watching, you know, the publications, the magazines, everyone's telling you, man, you are special, and you start believing it. Been there before. We want to be picked last. All we care about is where we are when all the games are played. That's what matters most. 865-255-03, B-Drive Waterproofing Hotline. Uh, let's bring in Andy this morning. Andy, good morning. Andy, good morning. 865-255-03, B-Drive Waterproofing Hotline. We'll take our first break of the day here on the Swain event. And um, Jeremy Pruitt did a really good job uh, at SEC Media Days. We can tell the difference between the end of the orange and white game until this point. Um, it looks like some, some folks are trying to capitalize on the fake beef between Aaron Murray, Pollock, and Jeremy Pruitt by throwing out silly um, information about Coach Fulmer and Pruitt working together. Uh, so we'll go ahead and, and, and nip that in the bud and discuss that and keep it moving. Uh, big recruiting weekend uh, approaching. Not this weekend, um, but here soon, there's a big recruiting weekend as as, as the dead period um, will um, stop here. Next weekend is going to be a big recruiting weekend. Only got two weeks to fall camp. Two weeks. Fall camp. Got to find some DBs out here. And uh, Tennessee looks to be in a great position to be able to do that. 865-200-5503. Hour one of the Swain event is driven by Toyota Knoxville. Stop by Toyota Knoxville to see their great selection of new and pre-owned vehicles. They are conveniently located off the Lover Road exit at 10415 Parkside Drive, right here in Knoxville. It's Christmas in July at Better Mattress. Better Mattress has teamed up with Home Depot and with select purchases, you can get a free Weber grill or choose a free adjustable base or a free headboard footboard while supplies last. Better Mattress has brands you know like Tempur-Pedic and Sealy, plus the brand I love, the Better Mattress brand, handcrafted in East Tennessee. Go to Better Mattress and get a free adjustable base free headboard footboard or free Weber grill while supplies last. Six area locations, bedrmattress.com. At some point in your life, you're going to need an attorney. You need a guy like Jerry Castile with the law firm of Butler, Vines, and Babb. Jerry Castile is East Tennessee born, and he understands what giving his all truly means. To Jared, every case is big, and every client is important. He will aggressively push your case to make sure you are quickly paid every dollar that you deserve. Give Jared Castile a call, 865-244-3933, and talk with him directly. His office is located at 27. 01 Kingston Pike. So if you've been injured in a car wreck, let Jerry Castile and Butler Vines and Bab fight for you. Top 100 barbecue restaurant Dead End Barbecue has a new slew of daily specials. Enjoy a different special meal every day, like the Chipotle chicken salad, the chicken tender sandwich, or the kitchen sink burrito filled with brisket, full pork, and chicken. Not to mention queso, jalapenos, and more. It's called the kitchen sink for a reason. Dead End isn't stopping at your plate, though. Be sure to check out their new summer drink offerings, including the Big Orange Crush, My Clementine, or the Tequila Squirt. There is always something new at Dead End Barbecue. Located off of Sutherland Avenue, Dead End Barbecue. The summer flavor search is over. You're driving home, flashing blue lights in your rearview mirror. You pull over, step out of your car, and the next thing you know, you're being arrested for driving under the influence. 
Now what do you do? We all should be responsible. But remember, just because you're arrested doesn't mean you're guilty. Call criminal defense and DUI attorney Marcos Garza at 865-540-8300. The investigative teams at the Garza Law Firm know the justice system inside and out. They utilize cutting-edge technologies and investigative methods to prepare your specific case. Before you plead guilty to any criminal charges, call criminal defense and DUI attorney Marcos Garza. Put his number in your phone right now, 865-540-8300, because you never know when you or a friend will need it. Don't say guilty. Say Garza. 865-540-8300. 865-540-8300 and GarzaLaw.com. A six five two hundred fifty five zero three B Drive Waterproofing Hotline. I thought silly season was supposed to be over because uh, it was SEC Media Days and, and we didn't we didn't have all the list, but this is two thousand eighteen, and sometimes the journalism is not the quality that we're used to and folks want the clicks people want the clicks and because of that very small things are turned into articles and because they just want you to click on their link whether I like you or not, th- that's the fact. And everyone is guilty. Everyone does it because you have to if you want people to jump on your website and show those numbers to advertisers. You got to get those clicks. And not everyone understands that. Hell, not everyone even reads the article anymore. People comment more. <laughs> on the the name of the article then reading the article mm-hmm. which is also pretty pretty shameful if you're going to have a take if you're going to have an opinion if you're going to be able to agree or disagree won't you take the time and the effort to read the entire article make sure you know what you're arguing about exactly some people just argue just on, off the title alone and that's that's not that's not smart to do either I'm pulling up the actual quotes. But Chattanooga Times Free Press in their in their article a little small paragraph insinuates that there is that that coach former athletic director and Jerry Pruitt not seeing eye to eye. Charlie, you have the quote right there. The exact quote is this. There also are whispers out of Knoxville that the hard-charging Pruitt and new athletic director Philip Fulmer are not exactly seeing eye to eye as both feel their way in their new roles, and maybe those growing pains are to be expected considering the newness in some ways uh, and the old habits, Fulmer being the coach, Pruitt working for, the guy, working for guys way more famous than the AD in others. Any clarification of those comments? I mean, you dropped that little line about whispers uh, of, of the two not seeing eye to eye. Any clarification on that comment in the article? Not no, 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 so, and no, no, you know, no. Of course not. Source, no, just whispers. There's whispers. Of course not. So there's all fans who saw this, tweeted me. And was like, what's up with this? What's going on? Swain, can you comment? Help us out. Educate us. Ben, 
Charlie? How long have we been working together? Been longer than than, than Charlie and I. About a, about a year and a month for me, and two years, yeah, two, two years and a half years. Ben, I think. Have we saw eye to eye on everything? Oh yeah. Every single day, yeah. there is never anything that comes just up. Just glad you just finally came around to thinking that Ryan Fitzpatrick is the greatest mm-hmm. quarterback of all time. Yeah. We have yeah. never quarreled at all. Yeah, we, we see eye to eye on everything. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. If you, ha- if you have a yes man around you and there's never any conflict, there's never any disagreement, there's never any um, difference of opinion, then you got the wrong people around you. You got to have people around you that's going to challenge you. It's going to say, oh, wait a minute. Why are you doing that? You got to have some checks and balances. Uh, Yeah, Jeremy Pruitt and Coach Fulmer are not going to see eye to eye on everything. They're not. Because you know why? One person is Jeremy Pruitt. The other person is not. <laughs> that's that's why. And this is not a big deal at all. Now, I made the comment yesterday. I know Brent Musburger jumped on. Uh, gave some quotes about Jaron Pruitt being the right high for Tennessee. I quote tweeted it and said, uh, I 1,000 or 1 million percent agree that Jaron Pruitt is exactly what Tennessee needs. And I had someone message me and say, well, Jaron Pruitt is zero and zero. So you're wrong. If you have any idea of what's been going on with Tennessee over the last 10 years, you understand why I said that. Jaron Pruitt does not have to coach a game to be what Tennessee needs right now. Look at what Jaron Pruitt did for Georgia. His mentality coming in and pushing out the softness, pushing out the 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 complacency of Georgia. And Georgia Brass saw, okay, well, this is why Alabama does what they what they do. This is this is why Florida State was able to get over the hump. Because it takes toughness in your program. Toughness. A way of doing things. The expectation that Pruitt brought into Georgia. That's what Tennessee needs. There's a lot of folks associated with Tennessee who was very comfortable. Very comfortable. And was doing a pretty good job. A pretty good job keeps a paycheck coming each and every month or every two weeks. That's what a pretty good job does for you. A pretty good job just keeps you employed. That's the way it was before. A pretty good job keeps your bosses from from getting onto you in your office. But a pretty good job is not good enough in SEC football. You need to be doing a great job. You need to be operating at a championship level level in everything that you do. Everything. And I'll sit back and I've watched many parts of our football program. Recruiting, in-state recruiting, out-state recruiting, boosters, uh, relationships, facilities, medical staff. Sit back and, and heard a lot of things. Know a lot of things over the last 10 years. We needed a shakeup. And maybe Coach Former wanted to do things more tactfully because he has some relationships with folks who he's had relationships with for 20, 25 years. And Pruitt don't care about that. He just cares about getting the job done. And maybe Coach Former was like, well, let's let's do it this way and try to smooth it this way. No. We're doing it now. We're trying to go. We're trying to win. Maybe you don't see eye to eye on that, but that's not a big deal. That's to be expected. That is great. That is what Tennessee needs, and that's what I meant by what I said is this is exactly what Tennessee needs. We haven't played a game yet. But don't you think there's things you have to do off the field before you ever step on the field if you want to win? See, folks think that you just wake up one day and then you just do everything right in between the lines, and then that's how you win. No. You win on the field by the things you do or don't do off the field. That's how you win. And everything that you do, you don't you don't build a house from the roof down. You don't. That's true. It's the foundation that takes the longest 
You ever be driving down the road and, you know, you see this this area cleared out? Okay, yeah, they about to do something over there. They about to build a house. They about to build something over there. And then for like a month, it looks the same. And then you see some some brick being laid, some foundation you being laid. You with the brick, huh? I mean, that's what they use, right? That's what they use. Do they use anything else? I didn't. I didn't. I didn't say brick by brick or anything. But they use. They use brick. That's what they use. Last time I checked. So for a month, you see nothing but dirt. And then one day, you see. Uh, I'm sorry. Some hardened material that's used to. I like um, that it's used for the foundation. How about that? And then the next day, you see a little bit more. And then next week, the house is built. Because it takes longer to build a foundation than it does at a house. And I'm sorry if you're having Bush Jones flashbacks, <laughs> but it's just the truth. It is the most pertinent. Uh, I'm, I'm sorry. You know, uh, me- metaphor? Is that a metaphor? Yeah, or I'm, whatever? I'm sorry you're having Bush Jones flashbacks, but they, that it is what it is there. But that's what Jeremy Prude is doing. He has to do all these things first before you ever win a game on a football field. When we went five and six, we had to start all over. Things that we had, we thought were okay with the foundation, we knew it was not. Because based on what happened the year before, having the talent and losing, you had to go back and start all over and correct the foundation. And the foundation is really simple. It's about the very small details, how you – Clean your locker room after practice. Are you wearing a backwards hat into the building? How you treat the lunch ladies and the lunch men? Where you sit in class? Do you touch the line in workouts? Are you five minutes early for meetings? Those are all things that have to do with the foundation, and that has to be fixed first. Even even the head coach and how he communicates with his staff, keeping his assistants on edge, getting on their butt. Like, all that is involved. And so that's what I meant when I said Pruitt is uh, exactly what Tennessee, Tennessee needs. It has nothing to do with um, him being 0-0. We needed a shakeup. A lot of folks comfortable. A lot of folks think that what we did in 98 has anything to do with now. It doesn't. Except for the trophy that sits in the trophy case. That's great, but kids don't care about that anymore. We care about that. They don't care. They don't. We care. They weren't, I guess, if you are a freshman right now, you literally weren't alive they, when Tennessee won a national championship. They don't care. <laughs> When's the last quote you saw from a recruit talking about the championship in 98? They don't care. Period. They were three years prior to life at that point. Yes. Uh, what you did yesterday does not guarantee you anything for tomorrow or anything for today. That's the way it works. That's the way it works in competition. What You won your reps in practice yesterday. That doesn't mean you're the starter today. You got to win your reps today. That doesn't mean you are starter tomorrow. Guess what you got to do tomorrow? You got to wake up and you got to be like the lion and gazelle and you got to sprint again, and you got to win your reps again if you want to be the starter again tomorrow. That's the way it works in college football. And that's why Nick Saban has a mentality after they win a championship. He's mad. Oh, we could have been working out and training during this time. Huh? You just won a championship. Why are you not happy? That's, that's a championship mentality. Bill Belichick, when they win the Super Bowl, it hasn't been in a while. ha, <laughs> ha. But when they win a championship, yeah, he smiles for about 30 minutes, but then it's on to the next one. It's all about that moment getting better. And what you did yesterday does not guarantee you anything for today. And so we, and I'm I'm not talking about the fans here, because we don't really have an impact on what goes on on the hill. We show up, we 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 show our support, we're excited, we donate money, all that good stuff. How we feel doesn't really matter about the 98 championship team. But we got people making decisions that think that people really care still about 98, and they don't. 
And it doesn't matter. That's why I said what I said about Jerry and Pruitt. So, yeah, Coach Former and Pruitt, news flash, breaking news. Ben, give us the breaking news. Sound. Come on, Ben. Breaking news. The ticker at the bottom. Coach Former, Tennessee's athletic director, and Jeremy Pruitt, Tennessee's first year head coach. They are not going to see eye to eye on things. Oh no. Working together. Oh my goodness. It'll be okay. In fact, I would say that that's actually pretty healthy. Uh, I think you have to do things like that to forge a, a good relationship. So let me let me do this because I know Spencer's been online for four minutes, and he's probably gonna be online for another four, three minutes. And so let's 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 get Spencer in right here. Uh, I know Spencer's gonna drop drop some good stuff, and then we'll go to break. How about that? Let's do that. Ben's keeping us on time. I uh, really appreciate that. Let's get to uh, Spencer. Spencer, good morning. Good morning, guys. I appreciate it, by the way. Uh, all right, a couple of things. One, do we not think that Philip Fulmer probably talked to Mark Rick and Jimbo and maybe even Nick Saban about Jeremy Pruitt before he offered Jeremy Pruitt the job? I know he's friends with Mark Rick, so I'm sure he talked to him about it. I'm sure Mark Rick was probably honest with him. Yeah, the guy's fire, he's intense, you know, all that kind of stuff. So Pruitt knew what I, I'm so much knew what he was getting with the guy, and he probably kind of liked it because at one point Fulmer had that edge, and maybe later on he kind of let things slide that he shouldn't have, and you know he he's aware of that probably. Uh, at the other, you know, the other side of the thing is this: Did Philip Fulmer see eye to eye with Trooper Taylor, David Cutcliffe, John Davis, Dan Brooks, et cetera, et cetera, all the time? There is no way. Nope. I mean, so you can probably say even in practice that you saw that there were times where they would argue. And so, former, I don't see you, I don't, the article, it did bother me from the standpoint of they're making it sound like it's an issue when we really don't know. I mean, it could later on become a big issue. I don't know. But at the same time, they're making it sound like this is something new under the sun. Like, there's no way Bill Palmer and Trooper Taylor just had so damn much in common that they never got in an argument with each other. Always been no way. Always been it. <laughs> Always. And, and, so, and that's fun. And they know that's part of the process. Now, I will have a problem if, you know, Pruitt kind of goes off the rails and starts, you know, kind of insulting Fulmer a little, you know, or doing things that are kind of uncalled for. Yeah, that will bother us because we've seen in, in the past that we've put the coach before the program. And that's one thing that, you know, I, I'm kind of keeping an eye on, and I think everybody else is, too. Is not, uh, you know, we're not going to let that happen again. Or we take that off the ball and we say, well, what Pruitt says or how he feels, we're going to support him 100%. Well, I, let me, so let, I think I think. Well, let me stop, let, well, let well, let me stop you. Well, let me, let me stop you, Spencer. And um, how about we do this? How about we just simply say right is right, wrong is wrong, and doesn't matter who you are. No, that's right. Because, I, because, I because that yeah, because, because Pruitt could be right in a situation, and Former could be wrong, or Former can be right, and Pruitt can be wrong. It doesn't matter sure. who sure. you are. Yeah, it doesn't matter who you are. Right is right, wrong is wrong. If you if you do if you do wrong, you should be held accountable. You should be um, challenged or whatever, so that way we do the right things. It doesn't matter who you are. I think uh, one of the biggest problems we have in sports, outside of sports, is. Because of who you are, you get to do things sometimes that other people are not able to do, even if it's wrong. Because of your name and because of your uh, what's you know beside your name and how much money you make, you're able to do what you want because of uh, of of you know your standing rather than doing what's right. Right. So well, and the, that's, that's, and the other thing is too, Tennessee specifically, it's been a problem the past ten years. So we've had this facade that everything is incredible at the University of Tennessee. Correct. Instead of people just saying, hey, you say what you mean and you mean what you say. Correct. And so, Simple. You know what? Fine. Let, let it happen. If we want to have arguments inside the office, that's great. Let's do it. But let's get, when it comes time to play the game, we're all on the same page and we know what we want. And that's as long as, the, as, long as you have the end goal in mind and everybody agrees on it and doesn't accept anything less, the rest of it will sort itself out. That's right. I, the, the article is a hatchet job. Just my opinion. It's um, you know, it's a classic example 
of this is this is this is what this is what the article reminds me of. When you say something to someone, it's an insult, and based on their reaction is your reaction. So if I say Charlie man, that shirt is ugly. Hey buddy. And and if you laugh, hey, I I I I'll laugh and <laughs> you I, I, know. I'll tell you but what. if but if Charlie but if I'm not even But if Charlie I'm watching the video, I'm not even watching the video, but I'll tell you this. Charlie, that shirt is ugly and I guarantee you it's too small. <laughs> it is it's actually <laughs> a little bigger and you're insulting the great Burt Bertle camp. Uh it's it's a shirt with <laughs> Bert the Bert the Sesame Street puppet. Yeah, and he has a headset on and he's saying money, money. But that's <laughs> like <laughs> hey, that's right, like me. Bad. Hey, <laughs> hey Spencer, <laughs> that's like me saying Charlie, your shirt is ugly. And Charlie's like, wait a minute, I didn't like that comment. And then I, and then I say, oh man, I was just kidding. Oh man, I'm just kidding. But if he doesn't say that, then I keep the comment. This 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 author just threw that in there. And based on the reaction, he'll be like, well, it's, you know, it's not a big deal. Well, why'd you put it in there? If you're not willing to explain exactly what you're talking about, explain how they're not seeing it eye to eye, then why put it in there? Why even bring it up? Because you know exactly what those comments were going to do. It was going to trigger Tennessee fans. It was going to um, get an emotional reaction and get people looking at your article, which would have you getting more clicks, which is the goal in the first place. So it's Which a, it, is exactly exactly it's exactly why I listen to you guys and I subscribe to the Athletic because that doesn't happen. That's exactly why I do that. So I'll just leave it at that. Yeah, I mean it's like, hey, they don't see eye to eye as whispers. I wish I can cuss right now. I would say no ish. Yeah, two guys <laughs> who don't see eye to eye together. No ish. Yeah, what a surprise. Yeah, I mean this is this is SEC football. I mean I've had <laughs> like I mean when you think about just relationships between you know guys. That I've had in my life, at least, like we can get close to coming to fists, and then five minutes later be bros again. Like I, I don't know. At least that me personally, that stuff just doesn't yeah bother me. If if you know you got to work together, I I said earlier. I think to some extent that stuff's healthy. It is healthy. Yeah, it is healthy. You, you don't need yes men. No, all around you. If y'all make a point. And I make a point, I'm not right just because I'm the host. Right is right, wrong is wrong. It doesn't matter your position. It doesn't matter how much money you make it. Right is right, wrong is wrong. And that's how we need to look at this thing moving forward. Yeah, people took Bush Jones' side because he was just a coach. But he was wrong. Right is right, wrong is wrong. Doesn't matter who you are. Say what you mean, mean what you say. Good call, Spencer. Be right back. Hour one of the Swain event is driven by Toyota Knoxville. Stop by Toyota Knoxville to see their great selection of new and pre-owned vehicles. They are conveniently located off the Lovell Road exit at 10415 Parkside Drive, right here in Knoxville. We have all made the mistake of dropping or breaking our smartphones. See? But did you know that you can have it repaired for a fraction of the cost that it takes to replace it? Well, you can because iDrop is the area's leading mobile repair store, home of the one hour or less phone repair, one year parts warranty, and number one customer service. Broken screens, cracked cameras, charging ports, batteries, you break it, we'll fix it. If you didn't break your phone, protect it with one of our leading accessories such as LifeProof, OtterBox, UAG, Incipico, Caseology, and Spec. Visit our West Hills location at 7115 Kingston Pike between Office Depot and Hardy's. Or call 865-888-9740 and speak with our trained technician to see how we can get your phone working today. Nobody likes surprises, so switch to Erie Rate Lock. Get a great rate that stays that way, even after an accident, ticket, or inflation. In fact, it's locked until you change a car, driver, or your address. Your Erie agent in Knoxville is in SureFit RM. Get a quote at 865-684-4900. That's 865-684-4900. Erie Rate Lock does not guarantee continued insurance coverage. It's not available in all states. JC's Tree and Landscaping Service specializes in quality tree work done at an affordable price. Trimming and removing trees are their specialty. They also offer other services like land clearing, 
stump grinding, crane services, and all of your basic landscaping needs for both commercial and residential. JC's will give you a free estimate and beat any written quote by a competitor to guarantee that you get the lowest price around. Don't risk your land with a fly-by-night service. JC's Tree and Landscaping is licensed and insured. Give them a call at 865-599-3799. Gentlemen, when it comes to health and quality of life, there are numbers every man needs to know, including our testosterone number. I recommend going to Low T Center. They make it quick and easy to get your levels checked, and it's covered by most health insurance. Low T levels can make you feel tired and grumpy. It can raise your cholesterol, cause weight gain, and loss of muscle mass. Low T Center's physicians specialize in treating low T in men. Listen to me here. They know men's health and are reinventing men's health care. Call 865-392-1388 or go to lowtcenter.com. You're listening to The Swain Event. And you know this, man. Craving homemade flavors that don't take hours in the kitchen? Mrs. Grissom's cheese spreads and chicken salads are the perfect go-to. Ready-to-eat meals and snacks found in the meat or dairy section at the grocery store with flavors of home in every bite. Whether you crave the classic Mrs. Grissom's pimento cheese or the gold gluten-free select cranberry pecan chicken salad, enjoy the sweet taste of a home-cooked meal in every container. Select the best. Select Mrs. Grissom's. I'm Vince Moore, wide receiver, VFL 1991, and you're listening to the Swain Event. Swain so Event, Fueled by Dead End Barbecue, top 100 barbecue restaurant in America. Welcome back to the program. Today is Bacon Wrap Shrimp and Grits Day at Dead End Barbecue. Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, a saute of Cajun Grill smoked sausage and bacon wrapped shrimp atop creamy cheese grits and a wild boar sauce garnished with green onion served with fresh salad greens at dead end barbecue uh it is outrageous out of this world um i had this dish last week it is phenomenal bacon wrap shrimp and grits at dead end barbecue from today all the way to sunday so this weekend make sure you go by and check it out 865 255503 Let's go to the phones, and um, is we got Andy. We've got Andy. Andy, good morning. Good morning. How y'all doing this morning? Great. How you doing, Andy? Doing good. Um, well, uh, supposedly what I heard uh, was seen on uh, Jeremy Pruitt and everything won the SEC days. Is that true? You saw – say that again? He said he won SEC days. I don't even know what that means, Andy. It's just a personal oh, opinion. Man. The there was a a pretty decent consensus that he did very well. Yeah, he did a good job. I, I will say that. I mean, across you know local and national analysts, there there was a lot of people saying it did well. Yeah. Well, I'm just uh, I can't wait. Like, uh, and I can finally say that I I got my tickets paid off, so it's official. <laughs> it's about to be go time. I mean, I'm. So freaking fired up. I'm just ready for a season to get started. You going to be in Charlotte, Andy? Yeah, buddy. All right, all right. Should be a good Charlotte, time. Charlotte, South Carolina, Auburn, uh, probably go to Kentucky. Uh, well, hold on. Every, every hold on. away game, I'm going off. And Andy, are you going to Kentucky for the Kentucky game? Yeah, buddy. Okay, you know that game's in Knoxville this year, right? 
Well, yeah, yeah, I know that one. Too. Okay, I just wanted to make sure. I didn't want you to end up in Lexington <laughs> when the game is actually in Knoxville. I might go down there anyway. You never know. I got a buddy that lives down there at Tennessee fan. We might just party. Hey, do what you got to do, you know. Other than that, I ain't really got nothing else. Uh, y'all have a wonderful weekend. All right. All right, Andy, thanks, man. Have a great weekend. Good stuff. Is it, what, what does it mean, like, to win? The, so, I, I, listen, I saw a press – I saw an SEC coaches ranking, and I got off Twitter. <laughs> it, was, it, it, was, it was time to get off a power ranking of how the coaches yeah. performed. You know how you, you know how you, I saw that. As you well. know how you just you just hit the 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 home button on your iPhone. Yeah, just to exit out Twitter. No, I didn't do that. I double tapped. I double tapped my home button and I swiped up and I completely closed Twitter. And you threw your phone out the window. No, I ain't do nope. all that. No, I ain't do that. I ain't do that now because I ain't trying to pay for a new one. But when I say I close Twitter, I close Twitter. It was time to get off. That is, yeah, that's absurd. I, like, that's what? the most objective thing ever. What? Like, like I put it, I, I will say this. We, we had a column that the, one of the writers for my, my site, Orange Wireport, Selena Summers, wrote, uh, where the headline was, Jeremy Pruitt's appearance at SEC Media Days was a win. We didn't say that he won SEC Media Days. And, I mean, the, the general gist of it was that he just – you know, he did well. He he had a good outing, and it was – And even with that, everybody wins SEC media days. It, it takes – Typically. Except absurd, Larry Fedor. Except for Larry Fedor took or a big Hugh L. Hugh Freeze. <laughs> or he, Hugh Freeze had a rough one. Yeah, last uh, year. Butch Jones was interesting one he, year. He was, a car, he was a carny barker. <laughs> yeah, but, but in reality, Butch Jones lost the SEC media days every year, but – you can you can you can lose it. You can have a bad go of it. You know, Hugh Freeze had a bad go of it because of everything that was surrounding that football program. That's why you don't want distractions. That's why I was so disappointed that we had a player get arrested right before the SEC Media Days. And good thing he wasn't a a, a, a contributor because Pru would would have had to address that. He wasn't asked about it in the main room. He was asked about it in one of the side okay. media hustles. But in the main room, he wasn't even asked about yeah, it. And, and the reason why is because the player was not a big-time player, was not a contributor, was not a starter, was not a, 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 a um, contributor. And so that is – that's good that Pruitt didn't have to answer that. But you don't want drama, you don't want distractions entering SEC media days because then you're going to be forced to talk about it. When, when Paul Feinbaum – and Nick Saban had their dust up. That was the that was the moment of SEC Media Days. It was it was centered around the Alabama players that got arrested in Louisiana, and that was in Birmingham. I was I was right there, man. That was I thought they was gonna throw some hands. I just don't understand how a coach can win SEC Media Days over another coach. Like what did what did Jeremy Pruitt do that was better than Nick Saban? What did Jeremy Pruitt do that was better than Kirby Smart wow. or Dan? Well. <clears throat> He was better than Dan Mullen in the sense of he didn't make a pair of Jordans look like a pair of Walmart shoes. He didn't, he didn't – Dan Mullen made all of us realize, oh, still got a lot of Bush Jones in him. Yeah. He he has the personality of Bush Jones in, in some ways. He's just better – he and, actually knows about football. And he and he's clueless on what kids really care about in recruiting because Miami and Florida State is – Spanking that bootay right now in recruiting. Correct. I mean, all Dan Mullen did was kind of – I thought he kind of made a fool of himself. I, I, like, who, I who thought cares? So, so. Like, who cares about your shoes, man? And if if I'm the Jordan brand, if I'm Michael Jordan, I'm calling the University of Florida and being like, nah, y'all can go back yeah, to Nike. Yeah, right. <laughs> we're, not, we're not doing this. Uh, if I'm Jordan, I'm, I'm, I'm keeping the deal in place. But I'm making a phone care. call, and I say, hey, hey, let's get him some eh. – Get him some better looking Jordans. Let's get him some better looking ones, man. I mean, and I'm I'm wearing better looking Jordans this morning than Dan Mullen wore. Me too. Me three. No. <laughs> no. No. You, you sit down with your little chacos. Over no, there. bro. Mm-mm. 
Mm-mm. These are Jordan Chacos, guys. No. <laughs> Collab. Can you no. not see that? What's no. funny is if, I bet if we ran a poll on, like, what shoes Charlie was wearing. It'd be Chacos 100%. Also, Chacos aren't shoes. Yeah, I mean, they're yeah, they're sandals. They're, yeah. Ben is the per- shoe expert here. Performance sandals, I think. Yeah. I don't know. They're comfortable, and I hate wearing socks. Whatever, bro. I'm with you, man. I'm with you on that one. Yeah, Dan Mullen just. I hate going like, barefoot. Like, no one cares about your shoes, man. No one no. cares. I mean, it's. It was cool when he was wearing the Yeezys the first year. Yeah, the first year. And then now that it's an every year thing, it's like. You know how sometimes when people just try way too hard and they try to you know brag and it's like, bro, it's not that serious. No. That's how I felt yesterday with Dan Mullen or the day before yesterday. Like Butch Jones, Butch's watches were kind of cool at first. At and then, first. And then, and then you kind of realized it, they weren't. Yeah, like, like yeah, yeah, man, you got nice shoes. You got nice suits. That doesn't make you a good coach. But Dan Mullen is a really good coach. Not a good recruiter. Not a good recruiter. <laughs> that is that is a fact right now. Slay the Vince, stay with us. Hour one of the Swain event is driven by Toyota Knoxville. Stop by Toyota Knoxville to see their great selection of new and pre-owned vehicles. They are conveniently located off the Lover Road exit at 10415 Parkside Drive, right here in Knoxville. VFL's Jason Swain and Todd Kelly here with our Men on Football and Smoothie segment. Let's discuss some of our favorite smoothies and how they impact our lives. TK, man, tell me which smoothie comes to mind when you think about playing defense. Swain O, the Peanut Butter Power Plus and the Power Punch Plus provide the energy needed to make plays every time they take the field. Then you have the Gladiator and the Hulk. Nutrition, every dominant player has to have. Bottom line, everyone wants to be a dominant player. Now, Swain, you tell me about the offensive side of the ball. TK, it's simple. You always score with Smoothie King. The Shredder personifies what we are going to do to opposing defenses. The Berry Punch and Activator will light up the scoreboard. And in case we need to go into overtime, the Pure Recharge will put us over the top for the win. Swain O, you know I love football and Smoothie King. I'm a VFL, a Smoothie King for life. The Chocolate Gladiator and the Chocolate Shredder with the scoop of peanut butter. Oh, that's my go-to smoothie. They get a chest bump all day. Yes, sir. This concludes our Men on Football and Smoothie King segment for today. Don't forget the Sip by Sip program. Use Smoothie King as a meal replacement five or more times a week, and you will feel and see the difference. Smoothie King, the healthy alternative to fast food. Delicious and nutritious. TK. Don't forget the peanut butter. Yeah, boy. With the hot weather and humidity comes mosquitoes and other pests. Let Southeast Termite and Pest Control take care of their problem for you. They offer one-time or package treatments that control biting adults as well as larvae. Southeast Termite and Pest Control has been in business since 1971 and is local and family-owned. They offer free estimates and quotes with no obligations. So don't get bit anymore. Go with the pest control company you can trust. Call Southeast Termite and Pest Control at 865-925-3700 or find them online at southeasttermite.com. Hey Annie, you're the spokesperson for Toyota Knoxville, right? That's right. Why should I buy from Toyota Knoxville? Are you looking for new or used vehicles? Does it matter? No, because Toyota Knoxville has over 390 new Toyotas on the ground and over 350 pre-owned vehicles available to choose from. Okay, so big selection. And a lifetime warranty at no charge on all new and select pre-owned vehicles. A lifetime warranty. A non-factory limited lifetime powertrain warranty with unlimited miles. Plus 30 years of experience in Knoxville, not just serving our customers, serving our community. And the buying experience? Hello, it's Toyota Knoxville. Read the reviews. Talk to anybody that's been there. Okay, okay. Where am I going? Toyota Knoxville is at I-40 and the Lover Road exit. Go to Parkside Drive. You can't miss it. Can I tell them Annie sent me? I wish you would. If you're passionate about the car you drive, come meet the people that are passionate about the way they sell at Toyota Knoxville. ToyotaKnoxville.com. Warranty good at participating dealers. I'm Vince Moore, wide receiver, VFL 1991, and you're listening to the Swain Event. Oh, man. Oh, boy. Let's see. Are you going to wait until for what to do it, or are you going to do it now? 
I know what you wanted to say. Just go ahead and get it out no, of the way. No, man. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna I'm not gonna do you like that, Ben. I don't care. I'm not gonna do you like it that. It doesn't bother me. I mean he's he's talking about it. I think people might want to know what right. we're I've been I've rattled right myself. At this so point. I have had a sore throat slash been coughing for three and a half weeks now and it has gotten worse <laughs> three, this week. Three and a half weeks. It's been, I, it's serious. I'm Yeah, you have. You, I, didn't, you didn't Google anything? You didn't no, get on I'm Pinterest not, and find no, out what you can do? No, I just <laughs> popped in some cough drops and was hoping it'd go away. <laughs> yeah, um, that, that's so gonna work. I'm going to the doctor today finally. <laughs> but um you so feel I, better now. I ate a yogurt last break. <laughs> Like last last two breaks ago, and Swain was like, "That's the worst thing you could possibly eat." Yeah. So he went and got me some tea and got me a tea bag. No, 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 no. Let let me tell the story. <laughs> okay. So I'm looking at Ben. I'm like, man, I know you like baseball, but do you have a dip in or something? And Ben's like, No, I have a cough drop in. I was like, Dude, you can't have a cough drop in, man. He's like, Well, my throat's been sore for you know for three weeks or whatever. And then he brings his breakfast, which is yogurt. I'm like, Ben, that's the the worst possible thing that you can be consuming right now with a sore throat. Dairy's not going to help you. Let me help you out. So I go and I get some Earl Grey tea. And I brought Ben a tea bag packet, a packet, which means that the tea bag is actually inside yeah. of the little package. It contains bro. a single tea bag. Correct. I was not aware. So I go and I get Ben some hot water. I bring Ben some honey and a spoon, and I just give it to him, and assuming that he knows what he's doing. <laughs> I did not know what I was doing. And during the break, <laughs> Charlie and I looked over, and we see Ben opening the packet, like trying to dump trying something. To <laughs> pour something out I of the it, packet. Yeah. I thought it was powder. Like it was going to be a powder. Like tea powder. I thought it was tea powder, <laughs> and I was just going to stir it up. And, and, and Charlie's like, what are you doing? You got to take the bag out of the packet. I didn't realize it was a tea bag. To I steep the tea. Powder. And Ben's like, I've never had tea before. And that's a true statement. I was like, what? You never had tea before? You live in, you live in Tennessee. I mean, that's, from sacri- Al- that's from, sacrilegious. You're from right Alabama? There. I'm from the South, and I don't like sweet tea. I know, I know. Mm-mm-mm. That is a for what? It tastes like water to me. Huh? It doesn't Wh- taste good. What? Whew. That's a cold take right there. I'm from the south. Freezing cold take. I don't like beer and I don't like sweet tea. What is wrong with me? Oh, Oh, boy. Oh, boy. So, during the break, we were just educating Ben on, hey, if you're going to be on the radio and you're going to use your voice, then you're probably going to have to get used to drinking hot tea because it clears up your, your, your voice a little bit and gets rid of that phlegm and stuff. I was on 3HL yesterday. Uh, my Thursday um, appearance, and my voice went out as I was talking. It was so embarrassing. It was kind of funny. I laughed about it afterwards. But in mid-sentence, my voice went out just from talking. Because I probably talk more off the air than I do on the air because I'm on the phones and stuff That's like that. Something. Yeah, I know, right? And so I lose my voice. My voice is weak sometimes like Bush Jones. That's why he had the, loud, the uh, loudspeaker because he would lose his voice. At weak, weak vocal cords. But – Ben, I need you to have tea discipline. Yeah. People pe- people can blow me up about not liking sweet tea. It's not going to faze me. I don't like sweet tea, and it doesn't bother me. Also, I don't feel bad about this. I truly thought it was powder. I, I guess if I should have read the little packet, I would have known better. But I don't feel bad about this dumb fault of mine. You should feel bad. I don't. You know who you are embarrassing? My parents. You are embarrassing your parents right now. Uh this they are not, sh- they this are shaking their like the actions of my parents. They are shaking their head in shame they probably that are. their son, a Southerner, a Tennessee fan, admitted on radio that he does not like tea, and he thought a tea packet contained tea powder <laughs> and not a tea bag. Swain and Vin, be right back. It's Christmas in July at Better Mattress. Better Mattress has teamed up with Home Depot and with select purchases, you can get a free Weber grill or choose a free adjustable base or a free headboard footboard while supplies last. Better Mattress has brands you know like Tempur-Pedic and Sealy, plus the brand I love, the Better Mattress brand, handcrafted in East Tennessee. Go to Better Mattress and get a free adjustable base 
free headboard footboard, or free Weber grill while supplies last. Six area locations, BEDRmattress.com. have cracks in your foundation a wet basement or a nasty leaky crawl space our listeners have heard about them on the swain event for over a year and now it's time to make the call give be dry waterproofing and foundation repair the opportunity to fix your home's problem since 1958 that's right nearly 60 years be dry has been solving basement crawl space and foundation problems throughout the country be dry only uses high quality materials from reputable manufacturers they back their installations with some of the best warranties in the industry to provide homeowners with added peace of mind they are truly an a plus company whenever you start experiencing a wet basement leaky crawl space or a cracked foundation remember these three words better call be dry reach out to be dry today at 865 662 5238 to schedule your free appointment. That's 865 662 5238. Remember, better call B Dry. There is a 30% chance of showers today, partly sunny with a high of 89 and a low around 69. Tomorrow, there is a 60% chance of rain, partly cloudy with a high around 86 and a low near 68. Sunday, showers and thunderstorms likely, mostly cloudy with a high in the low 80s. Weather on the Swain event is brought to you by B-Dry. If your basement is wet or cracked, B-Dry can help. BeeDry.com. Touchdown or turnover is up next on the Swain event. When I made the move to my own studio, I was worried about this. I was worried about that. I was worried about, hey, did I get this piece of equipment? Did I get that piece of equipment? Does that sound good? Does that not sound good? One thing I didn't have to worry about, that was office furniture. Because office furniture outfitters met my furniture needs. With a 50,000 square foot facility, they have East Tennessee's largest selection and are the best value for new and used office furniture. Located in Knoxville, it's easy to find everything you need for your new space, including desks, file cabinets, chairs, conference tables, and more. Office Furniture Outfitters is turnkey. They came to my place, we mapped everything out that was needed, they delivered, and get this, set everything up. To learn more about what Office Furniture Outfitters can do for you, log on to OFONOX.com. That's OFONOX.com. All right, team, listen up. It's tailgating time again in Tennessee. But most importantly, team, you're going to need to refi that tailgate and the truck it's attached to. With a refinanced auto loan with Alcoa 10 Federal Credit Union with their got that promotion, they'll give you up to $500 for your debt. I see, coach. That's right, Johnny. Alcoa 10 will pay you up to $500 for your debt. Now, let's get out there and spread the word. Say it with me. Alcoa 10. Alcoa 10. Alcoa 10. ATFCU is an equal housing lender. I just wanted to come by and congratulate you on the great work you've been doing. Uh, you're the hell we got, man. Now that's how you're supposed to drive. From that one, that's how you drive. This kid can draw circles. Don't remind yourself. Nobody built like you. You design yourself. Bam. Awesome. Mm-hmm. Phenomenal. Attaboy. All right, it's time for Attaboy, where we highlight some positivity out there in the world. Charlie has a really, really good Attaboy, and I uh, heard about this, and this is from the home state, so uh, I like this one. Charlie, what you got? I like this is an American story, but it is clearly written by someone who's not in America because it says, Alabama college students, 32-kilometer walk to work attracts praise and a new <laughs> car. I don't know what 32 kilometers is. I think it was, yeah, it says 20 miles. So, an Alabama college student whose car broke down before his first day of work made the 20-mile walk on foot, uh, a feat that earned him fame and a new car. He was going to work for the Bell Hops Movers, which is a cool little service. Actually, used the last time I moved, and they do uh, a, a pretty solid job. Um, Walter Carr set out from Homewood at midnight and made it to Pelham, Alabama by 4 a.m. on Friday. There, he encountered Pelham police officers who took him to breakfast and dropped him off at his assignment. And then a uh, 
client Ginny Lamy says Carr declined her offer for rest after he'd walked 20 miles. Instead, he got straight to work. Impressed by the Hurricane Katrina refugee's work ethic, she started a GoFundMe that raised more than $6,600. And then when the CEO of Bellhops learned about this, uh, he drove his own car from Tennessee to Alabama on Monday and gave it uh, to Carr. He, he surprised Carr with a car. Uh, there's a cool video uh, online of, of the CEO of Bellhops doing this. And it's just a really cool, awesome story. A kid who's working hard, trying to make it in life, doing what he's got to do, uh, you know, to to get paid and, and keep food on the table. And, uh, you know, he's getting getting rewarded for his hard work. It's really, really cool story. Love very, that. Very cool story. My uh, two former roommates, ooh, that felt weird to say. My two former roommates worked at Bell Hops last summer, and they loved it there. I almost worked there this summer. Yeah, it's like specifically um, college kids, I think. Yeah, I mean, they're just yeah. easy. And it's been, they're young. Mm-hmm. Cool little strong. They'll, they'll, they'll break their back for you. It's good yes. stuff. Uh, I'm giving Tomahawk Nation an attaboy today because they gave everybody in the country that hates the University of Florida some ammo, some right. bullets. That's right. They, uh, they filled the chamber for us because they put out an article displaying and stating the fact that Florida's decommitment class ranks higher than their actual <clears throat> Recruiting class. I just pulled a Jason Swain there. Um, my was worse, man. My, I went. I mean, my voice went totally out. Trust me. Nah, I, I, I gotta get uh, my man Brent Daugherty sent me a sent me a clip of that. It was embarrassing. Go ahead. I, sorry. I love to to that. Uh, Florida has 11 current commitments, and they have had nine decommitments. Out of those nine decommitments, they've had one five star, five four stars, and three three stars, for an average star of 3.8. Florida's current commitments, zero five stars, four four stars, which is one less than the decommitments, and seven three stars for an average star rating of 3.4. So Florida's decommitments are ranked higher by .4. And I just love this article because it is such a beautiful thing to so for somebody to sit down um, and just think, okay, I think Florida's decommitments might be ranked higher as a group than Florida's, Florida's current commitments. What a brilliant idea and brilliant thing to research. <laughs> and it turns out that it's true. And I, I understand that most of Florida's recruit, recruits, they, they're the big fish. They get them on signing day or the, the weeks leading up to signing day. But this is not a good look for Dan Mullen because at Florida, you should be able to throw a, a stone, hit somebody outside of uh, Gainesville, and then be able to commit to your school. There, There's zero – reasoning for Florida not to always be in the top 25 of the current recruiting class, in my opinion. The the pettiness of this is hilarious. Yes. But I'm all for it. I am 100% here I, for it. I think I've said it on this show before. I'm, I'm a huge fan of extreme pettiness. Yes. This absolutely qualifies. And so, at, as much as – I'm not a huge fan of the guy that runs that website, uh, but this is very funny. Is that Bud Elliott? It is Bud Elliott. I hate that guy. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to make a comment. And I'm going to get to the phones. I'm going to explain the comment after the phone call. On this program, probably two, three years ago, I said that Missouri, when Missouri was whooping people's butt, when they entered the SEC, I said they will not continue the success because they are not recruiting at a high level, a level needed to – compete each and every year that they will fall off and it happened if you're not recruiting every single year at a high level you're going to struggle in the next four to five year span Jeremy Pruitt against Dan Mullen Tennessee's going to have better players if Dan Mullen continues to recruit this way and that's very sad because Dan Mullen is in the state of Florida. Now, Dan Mullen is a really great football coach when it comes to developing talent. He has not won big because he's been in Mississippi State. But as far as just a football coach, he's just like Pruitt, just a great football coach. Dan Mullen is a great football coach. The success at the, at the head coach has a lot to do with – uh, resources and, and where you where you're coaching at and all those things. But just as a football coach, they're really, really good. 
But if Dan Mullen recruits this way versus Pruitt recruiting the way that he's recruiting, there's going to be a gap between Tennessee and Florida, and it's not going to favor Florida. You can't recruit the way Florida's recruiting and expect to beat Georgia, Tennessee, each and every year if you're not recruiting at a high level. Dan Mullen is start is is starting is starting off recruiting like Missouri. Yeah, maybe he should uh, quit worrying about what shoes he's going to wear to SEC Media Day and start focusing on recruiting. Now I will say real quick before we get to Charles, I give I gave and will continue to give Dan Mullen a lot of crap about his shoes that he wore to SEC Media Days. He's a good coach, but that Jordan lapel that he had on uh, was clean. Yeah, looked nice. Yeah, he's number he's the number one rated SEC lapel coach. He had the best lapel. Let's 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 put that as, as a ranking. Charles, good morning. Good morning, man. How you doing, Swan? How you doing, man? All right. Well, I think I got a pretty good shoe game, if I say so myself. Okay, okay. I, okay. I keep up with it. You know, I got all the J's. Okay, okay, Charles. But, uh, hey, what size you wear though? Thirteen. Okay. Ooh, I bet I bet Charles has some pennies in his closet. Uh -huh. Oh, absolutely. You know, I got some pennies. Charles, what you supposed to say when someone asks you? What size you wear? You're supposed to say, not your size. Because then right. they won't ask to borrow your shoes. So, right. Because right. I wear 12 and a half, Charles. So, I mean, you know, hey, I technically could rock the pennies that you have in your closet. But, you know, since I'm a VFL, I'm Team Barnes. I'm not wearing any pennies. We're Team KD right Swain, now. you can wear some pennies. I'm not wearing pennies. I'm a VFL, dang it. Swain, have you seen them, uh, have you seen them black suede pennies? Yes. They're nice looking. <laughs> I know they are. <laughs> Want to give me a pair tomorrow? <laughs> They're clean, man. I can't do it. I can't let Rick Barnes down. I gotta wear KDs. <laughs> I understand, Swain. No, what's but up, Swain, man? If you remember, Dan Mullen, he never has like recruiting. Nope. He didn't, he didn't recruit in Florida. Nope. He don't like. He it. was the offensive coordinator, so this shouldn't be a surprise to anybody. Nope. Dan Mullen has never liked to recruit. Well, to recruit, you have to tell someone else how good they are. Dan Mullen likes people to tell him how good he is. Exactly. That's the, that's yeah. the that's the that's the problem for Dan Mullen in recruiting. Exactly. But anyway, you guys have a great show. Hang up a little. Have a good one, man. Hey, Dan Mullen got some swag now. He has confidence. Needed to be to be successful in the SEC. He He's proven that swag. at Mississippi State. But Dan Mullen is about Dan Mullen. He has a big ego and. To recruit, you have to humble yourself, and you may have to you know, kiss up a little bit and, and, and give compliments out to recruits and all those things. And then when they get here, you turn the switch, and then you de-recruit them and you coach them hard and all that good stuff. But, yeah, I mean, there's coaches who just don't like recruiting. Yeah. Prove it. Loves recruiting. He loves it. Like he bathes in recruiting. There's nothing else he likes to do more than recruit. You think he likes to recruit more than he likes to coach? Mm. No. Yeah. I think coaching, but then recruiting is a, like a real close second. A real close second. Dude, his probably his dream of you know, when you when you enter this coaching profession and you make the decision, okay, this is something I really want to do. And some guys make a decision to be a, a lifelong assistant. You can make good money. You, you're good. But there's some folks who are like, no, I want to be a head coach. When Pruitt made that decision, that dream came alive in December when Coach Former introduced him as head coach. Like, he just reached his goal of being a college football head coach at a program that's paying him $3 million a year or some change. Five minutes into, in, into the uh, introduction, Prue was ready to go and recruit. He, literally, he almost ran out of it. Like, he was like, are we finished or are we done? Like, he was ready to go recruit. Is, is this it? I got to go. You have to love recruiting. To do this in this conference, man, you, to win you, in this conference, you got to love it. And, and for a guy like Dan Mullen, personally, I think he's going to struggle to relate to a lot of kids in that state. So for him, the importance will be on his recruiting staff or his coaching staff, rather. And if you look at his staff, there's no names that really jump out to you. Todd Grantham, Billy Gonzalez, who's a good coach, but in terms of recruiting, South Sinceri is the defensive line coach. 
Ron English, Larry Scott, Charlton Warren. There's nobody that, like, jumps out to you. Uh, Nick Saban has guys on his staff that jump out to you. It, it, Jeremy Prude has guys that jump out. Kirby Smart has guys that jump out. There's nobody that jumps Muschamp out to you. Muschamp has guys recruiting yes. guys that, that, Auburn, that jumps. Yeah. Auburn has guys. LSU has guys. Florida doesn't have anybody that jumps out at but you. But even I, I would say, uh, you know, Larry Scott is at least a dude but who's not, been down there and is really yes. connected. Yes, how, but he how, doesn't recruit on the level that Florida should be recruiting. That's true. That's probably true. Larry, Larry yeah. Scott's a good recruiter for – I don't. I don't want to disrespect. La- Larry has good connections in Miami, but dude, Mark Rick played at Miami. So yeah. if Mark Rick wasn't at Miami and they had Al Golden down there or something like that, okay, Larry Scott would probably be able to clean up in Miami. But you're not going to be able to clean up in Miami because they got one of their own down there, and so they are cleaning up in Miami. And Rick's always been a been a great recruiter. Yeah, always, always a great recruiter. And it's had great recruiters on his staff. And then you add in Florida State and what Willie Taggart's going to do? I'll tell you right now. Willie parents, Taggart's about to run that state. Them parents and those kids gonna, will love to play for Willie Taggart. What, whether he coaches them up and win games, that's another story. They'll but love him. But he's going to have the players because he's going to recruit. Yeah, he's going to run that state. And I, I don't think there's any question to it. I think right now the best recruiting element for Dan Mullen would be to have his players, current players, on his side because – you hear coaches say it all the time. The current players can also be your biggest help in recruiting as well. And if you get uh, the guys currently on the team, the Jacob Copelands, the Kadarius Tonys, guys like that, the Emory Jones, if they if they fall in love with you and they love you as a head coach and they're confident in you, then when these guys come on a visit, they're going to vouch for you. So I, right now, I think that's uh, kind of maybe his biggest key that he needs to harp on is just really making sure that these players, and I'm sure they will. That they, that they love playing for him and let them peer recruit. I'm with you, man. I agree with you 100%. 865 255 um, How's your short throat? Your short throat's okay? Uh, well, you were correct on the yogurt aspect. I was unaware of that. See, I thought I was eating healthy with the yogurt. And then you say, that's the worst thing you could possibly eat. But now I see why, because my throat has kind of started to – Feel a little better. Yeah. Well, yeah. no, feel a little worse since eating the yogurt. The tea hasn't really kicked okay. in yet. Okay. So I need to go to break so I can chug this. Yeah. We uh we tweeted a picture of you drinking hot tea for the first time, mm-hmm. and um, it is a a dig at Vanderbilt that you had your pinky up. That's that's not that's not being style of a drinking um, hot tea. That's not what we're going to allow here in the Swain event. Uh, but 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 pinkies up. That's that's how Vanderbilt drinks you, their their Gatorade. Do you see what I quoted? I yeah. said I learned from the best, and then I tagged my buddy. That's uh, they're starting running back this year. Oh uh, yeah, yeah. I think I saw that. I learned from the best, and I tagged Kari in it. Damn man, <laughs> don't give all Twitter on him. He might not want to be your friend anymore. This is true. This is true. You set me up for that. Thought we was cool, Ben. <laughs> We're not friends anymore. <laughs> look, Delete my number. Look, Car- Kari has one simple comeback. They've won what three out of the last four now. So, and he's been on the roster for all of that. I'm, I'm going to break. Swain event. Be right back. It's Christmas in July at Better Mattress. Better Mattress has teamed up with Home Depot and with select purchases, you can get a free Weber grill or choose a free adjustable base or a free headboard footboard while supplies last. Better Mattress has brands you know like Tempur-Pedic and Sealy, plus the brand I love, the Better Mattress brand, handcrafted in East Tennessee. Go to Better Mattress and get a free adjustable base free headboard footboard, or free Weber grill while supplies last. Six area locations, BEDRmattress.com. have cracks in your foundation a wet basement or a nasty leaky crawl space our listeners have heard about them on the swain event for over a year and now it's time to make the call give be dry waterproofing and foundation repair the opportunity to fix your home's problem since 1958 
That's right, nearly 60 years, B-Dry has been solving basement, crawl space, and foundation problems throughout the country. B-Dry only uses high-quality materials from reputable manufacturers. They back their installations with some of the best warranties in the industry to provide homeowners with added peace of mind. They are truly an A-plus company. Whenever you start experiencing a wet basement, leaky crawl space, or a cracked foundation, remember these three words. Better call B-Dry. Reach out to B-Dry today at 865-662-5238 to schedule your free appointment. That's 865-662-5238. Remember, better call be dry. There is a 30% chance of showers today, partly sunny with a high of 89 and a low around 69. Tomorrow, there is a 60% chance of rain, partly cloudy with a high around 86 and a low near 68. Sunday, showers and thunderstorms likely, mostly cloudy with a high and the low 80s. Weather on the Swain event is brought to you by Be Dry. If your basement is wet or cracked, Be Dry can help. BeDry.com. Touchdown or turnover is up next on the Swain event. When I made the move to my own studio, I was worried about this. I was worried about that. I was worried about, hey, did I get this piece of equipment? Did I get that piece of equipment? Does that sound good? Does that not sound good? One thing I didn't have to worry about, that was office furniture. Because office furniture outfitters met my furniture needs. With a 50,000 square foot facility, they have East Tennessee's largest selection and are the best value for new and used office furniture. Located in Knoxville, it's easy to find everything you need for your new space, including desks, file cabinets, chairs, conference tables, and more. Office Furniture Outfitters is turnkey. They came to my place, we mapped everything out that was needed, they delivered, and get this, set everything up. To learn more about what Office Furniture Outfitters can do for you, log on to OFONOX.com. That's OFONOX.com. All right, team, listen up. It's tailgating time again in Tennessee. But most importantly, team, you're going to need to refi that tailgate and the truck it's attached to. With a refinanced auto loan with Alcoa Tan Federal Credit Union with their Got That promotion, they'll give you up to $500 for your debt. I see, coach. That's right, Johnny Alcoa Tan will pay you up to $500 for your debt. Now, let's get out there and spread the word. Say it with me. Alcoa Tan, Alcoa Tan, Alcoa Tan. ATFC is an equal housing lender. Touchdown or Turnover is backed by Alcor 10 Federal Credit Union, a place where you belong. Touchdown turnover back by Alcoa 10 Federal Credit Union, a place where you belong. Better rates and better service. ATFCU.com. Take advantage of their Got Debt campaign. Touchdown turnover. We have the um, the preseason standings, predictions that will be released later on today. Uh, you'll have your preseason all SEC teams. Uh, players who have a first, second, and third team. Touchdown turnover that Tennessee will have more than two players on the all-SEC preseason team. So at least three. I say... More than two. I say touchdown. Nigel Warrior, obviously, I guess the question with Nigel will be, is he first team or is he second team? Uh... I regard him as the best safety in the league, one of the best safeties in the league. But as we know, a lot of people aren't really paying attention to Tennessee's football team right now, so maybe he doesn't get the credit that he deserves. Um, so definitely Nigel makes it. Trey Smith should be first team All-SEC. And then I think Daniel Batuli makes the second team potentially. I think he definitely makes the third team. He's one of the best returning linebackers in the conference, finished 12th. Uh, in the conference and tackles last year with 90. Uh, we saw the stat the other day that I believe he was the second most efficient tackler in the SEC returning. So amongst those three, uh, I definitely think those are the guys that land on the team. Unfortunately, we don't have Trevor Daniels anymore, so we can't shoot him in as a selection. Uh, we don't have Evan Berry to shoot him, at, shoot him in as a selection, a kick returner. 
Um, I guess the other options would be Corte Sapp potentially. Um, maybe Micah Aberdathy on the third team. Uh, and that's about it. Uh, maybe Marquez Callaway gets in on the third team. I just think the the conference is so uh, deep at receiver got a, got right a now. Lot of good receivers. There's so many good receivers uh, right now in the conference. I don't see anybody at tight end for Tennessee. Ty Chandler just hasn't done enough to make a conference team. Um, and then obviously quarterbacks, they haven't really done enough or proven anything yet to make a conference team. So I, I'll go three. Thule, Nigel, and Trey Smith. Ow. Ah. Tough. I'll, you just a little be a little contrary. Now I'll say turnover. It's just two. They got you. Trey Smith's a given. That's done. You know, but just he's the best offensive lineman in the league. Um, and then Nigel gets in there, and then I I think that's that's it. I think people aren't paying attention to Tennessee enough. Just when I scan the the media landscape and the the conversations that I've had with other dudes around the league. I just don't think that they're looking at Tennessee's roster in any kind of a serious way. I think they're they're sleeping on this team a little bit, and that's their own mistake. There is talent on this roster that's getting ignored. Um, but I just think, you know, Nigel Warrior has a name out there. Trey Smith obviously has a name out there. I think they they both make it, and then that's that's it. Uh, although I, I agree with you, Ben. Batuli should be. He's all, he's going to be a monster already. I mean, he's just all over the field all the time. Um and then I think Marquez Callaway has a case, but like like we were saying, the receiver depth in the league right now is phenomenal. So um, I'll just say uh, it's two. This is this is uh, this is a tough one because as I you know, kind of come through this, Callaway is an All SEC talent at the wide receiver position, but because of how he was so. Um, misused last year. I mean, having 100 and something yards in his first game and then really nothing after that. I think he finished with 496. Yeah, I mean, and then he had 115 in the first game. Just just unreal when you think about that. Uh, Debo Samuel has done more for South Carolina. Uh, you look at uh, Van Jefferson, if he's clear and everything's good there, uh, how can you not have Van Jefferson high? You look at the dudes over at Ole Miss. A.J. Brown, beast. DeMarcus Lodge, I mean, they are just D.K. Un- Metcalf. They're just unreal. And then you look over at Alabama and um, and what they have, their young their young receivers. So, um, if it's going to be three, we already know Najee Warrior and Trey Smith will get recognized. But if it's going to be three, it's probably going to be on the defensive side of the football. And it's probably going to be maybe a Daniel Batuli. Because Daniel Batuli last year was one of the most efficient tacklers in the conference according to college football film room. We discussed that, uh, I want to say yesterday uh, or day before, uh, 95% efficiency rate uh, at tackling. So he doesn't miss tackles a lot. He was all over the field uh, last year. You can stink before an 8-0-8 in the SEC and, and still shine on your football team if you play defense. If you play defense because – De- Tennessee's defense was on the field so much last year, Daniel Batuli had an opportunity to make more plays. Now, because he was also on the field too much, you know, guys were also tired on defense. But uh, I like Daniel Batuli being the third guy here. I remember when Kirk Majit and A.J. Johnsons would get passed over just because they played on bad teams. So, so will that happen again? It possibly could. But I'm going to take a step and say um, – touchdown that they'll have three and I think that third one will be Dane Batuli. I agree with you Benjamin. I thought an interesting comment Charlie made was that you know guys are overlooking this team that has a little more talent than people can see that don't cover Tennessee on a daily basis. My question is is that fair or unfair because I look at it and I, I don't blame the media members that maybe don't see it just yet because no. Pruitt mentioned it in his press conference 30 guys that are going to be key contributors more than likely did not participate in the spring. I mean, yeah. very few know about Dominic Wood Anderson, your Jameer Johnsons, your Juco types that are coming in, your Madre Londons, obviously. Everybody talks about Keller Christ as far as Juco additions and grad transfers, but nobody mentions Madre London or Dominic Wood Anderson, guys like that. And then you also have guys like J.J. Peterson who ha- haven't got to campus yet uh, who – figure to be big impact so I I necessarily don't blame the media members especially coming off a four and eight season the worst season in Tennessee 
program history, I don't necessarily blame them. I, I just look at it, if you were paying attention at all to Tennessee, you know that that, that team wasn't a 4-8 a and eight team. They were, obviously, but but they played way below what they really are. I mean, a, they, a good, they, if, if you have a good coach, you beat South Carolina. You beat South you Carolina, you beat, beat Kentucky. Kentucky. I don't know. Vanderbilt's a toss up because you did get blown out by Vanderbilt. But you didn't have you didn't you know everything was falling apart. But maybe at that good, point. yeah, and maybe good coaching at that point. Yeah. Good strength Th- I and conditioning program. You don't have the injuries that you have. You don't yeah. fall behind early in the game like you did, and things don't spiral out of control. Exactly. Uh, so, like I said, yeah, if you were paying attention, that wasn't really a four and eight team. Was it like a nine win team? No. But um, I I just think yeah they they're getting they're getting overlooked a little bit, and I think. They deserve, some, some folks will be surprised. Yeah, they deserve to be overlooked. Mm-hmm. We do. Without a doubt. I mean, we, we deserve to be overlooked. It's kind of hard sometimes playing, you know, wearing different hats here. But we deserve, they deserve to be overlooked. You went 4-8, 0-8 oh, in the SEC. You don't deserve any respect. You got to go earn it now. And so I can see where Daniel Batuli would get passed over. I can see where uh, Marquez Callaway would get passed over because of other guys who maybe are equally as good as our players, but their teams are more successful, so they get the nod. That happens. Fair or unfair, it is what it is. You got to go prove it. You got to go earn your respect. So, um, hopefully, at the end of the season, Patuli and Callaway get that recognition yep. that they deserve and, and Sap and all those guys. Um, but right now, hey, go prove it. Go prove it. Only a few guys on our football team has been able to say that they have – uh, earn their way on the preseason list, and that is Naja Warrior, and that is that is Trey Smith. Not a lot of the guys can say that. Um, Daniel Patuli can make a case, but we've seen A.J. Johnson and, and Kurt Majit be kind of passed up because they played on bad teams. I think another reason kind of people are dismissing Tennessee immediately as soon as their name is brought up is because of the schedule. They immediately mm-hmm. write Tennessee off because of the schedule. But look at all the teams in the SEC. They have obviously two – um, out of division games that are conference games that they play, and then you usually have one big Power Five team that you're playing. Those three for Tennessee: Auburn, at Auburn, Alabama, and a neutral site game against West Virginia. Who else in the league is playing a trio like that that isn't on their regular schedule? Oh. Alabama, Auburn, West Virginia, and we get West Virginia on a year that they're supposed to be really good. They're the kind of a sneaky dark horse team to make the playoffs. Auburn's defense is just absolutely loaded. Some view it as potentially the best team in the league or unit in the league. And then Alabama is Alabama, the best team in yeah, yeah, college is. football history. Yeah, it is. It is. Um, so, I mean, that's another reason why people are immediately knocking Tennessee is because realistically, I mean, it is possible that Tennessee could start the season 2-6. and six. That's possible. And, and, and it's unfortunate, but people see that. Cause I heard Cole Kublik, I heard – Jordan Rodgers, I want to say Greg McElroy, Marcus Spears. I mean, that's the first thing out of their mouth is they're going to start two and six out of the gate, and maybe three and five. And it's not because they don't like Tennessee or they're biased. It, it is – it's just what they think. Mm-hmm. So, Nacho says four. He thinks four guys will be named on the preseason. He's including Jennings. And, and mm-hmm. I like Jennings. I love Jawan Jennings, his mentality. Uh, how he goes about his business on the football field. Uh, I was so happy to hear Pruitt say that he has done everything that 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 he's asked of Jawan. Jawan has has met the expectations of the coach, of the AD, of everything they've laid out for him to do. He's done that. But this is where we have to take a little step outside of um, ourselves as Tennessee fans to understand they are – receivers that have done more that are a little bit better right now than Juwan. Juwan didn't play a whole season last year. Uh, he's a converted quarterback, he's, so he's still learning the position, whereas you have other guys that have done it longer and have produced a little bit more. The flash of the touchdown against Florida and the flash of the catch against Georgia, uh, those are two plays that some people – put over a body of work, a body of production that we've seen from other receivers like A.J. Brown and Debo Samuel and, you know, Ryan Davis from Auburn and Terry Gotwin at Georgia. Um, and, and, and The Ole Miss trio. Yeah, I mean, you look at you know, Emmanuel Hall there at, at Missouri. So there's a lot of good receivers out here. And so <coughs> Juwan probably won't be mentioned because he didn't play all last right. year. 
Um, but Jawan has a chance. He has two years now, and he may need both of those years if he wants to fulfill his goal of playing in the NFL. He may only need one. But Jawan has work to do to develop as a wide receiver, uh, to get his speed down, to show that he is healthy. I know that the, the, the flash of the Florida play and the Georgia play sometimes will kind of warp the perception a little bit for fans. But I'm telling you, Jawan has work to do as a wide receiver. And that's just that's just coming from a wide receiver yeah. that's looking at other guys on our team. And I see that they're probably more complete of a wide receiver. They just didn't have the big splash plays um, that Jawan had. Now, Callaway does have that yeah. in that yeah. one game. But um, understand that there's, there's other receivers in the league that are a little bit better right now. Individually, that Jennings catch and the catch against – Tabor and whatnot, it counts as one individually, it counts as one catch. Yeah. It, it doesn't count as 10, 20, 30 catches. That's just one catch. Yeah. He, one touchdown. And they were big touchdowns, but from an individual perspective, yeah. they won Tennessee a football game, but from an individual perspective, I mean, it's just one touchdown compared to what other guys have done. Yeah. More more production, more complete game. And I uh, can't wait to, for Jawan to, to get to that point. He has the work ethic, he has a dog mentality. He obviously has a God given ability and body type. So he just got he has to put that together. Be right back. At some point in your life, you're going to need an attorney. You need a guy like Jerrica Steele with the law firm of Butler, Vines, and Bab. Jerrica Steele is East Tennessee born and he understands what giving his all truly means. To Jared, every case is big and every client is important. He will aggressively push your case to make sure you are quickly paid every dollar that you deserve. Give Jared Castillo a call, 865-244-3933, and talk with him directly. His office is located at 2701 Kingston Pike. So if you've been injured in a car wreck, let Jared Castillo and Butler Vines and Bab fight for you. Top 100 Barbecue Restaurant Dead End Barbecue has a new slew of daily specials. Enjoy a different special meal every day, like the Chipotle Chicken Salad, the Chicken Tender Sandwich, or the Kitchen Sink Burrito filled with brisket, pulled pork, and chicken. Not to mention queso, jalapenos, and more. It's called the Kitchen Sink for a reason. Dead End isn't stopping at your plate, though. Be sure to check out their new summer drink offerings, including the Big Orange Crush, My Clementine, or the Tequila Squirt. There is always something new at Dead End Barbecue. Located off of Sutherland Avenue, Dead End Barbecue. The summer flavor search is over. You're driving home, flashing blue lights in your rearview mirror. The next thing you know, you're being arrested for DUI. Be responsible, but remember, just because you're arrested doesn't mean you're guilty. Call DUI and criminal defense attorney Marcos Garza. Put this number in your phone right now, 865-540-8300. Because you never know when you or a friend will need it. Don't say guilty, say Garza. 865-540-8300 and GarzaLaw.com. We have all made the mistake of dropping or breaking our smartphones. See? But did you know that you can have it repaired for a fraction of the cost that it takes to replace it? Well, you can. Because iDrop is the area's leading mobile repair store, home of the one hour or less phone repair, one year parts warranty, and number one customer service. Broken screens, cracked cameras, charging ports, batteries, you break it, we'll fix it. If you didn't break your phone, protect it with one of our leading accessories such as LifeProof, OtterBox, UAG, and Sipico, Caseology, and Spec. Visit our West Hills location at 7115 Kingston Pike between Office Depot and Hardy's. Or call 865-888-9740 and speak with our trained technicians to see how we can get your phone working today. Insurance. Nobody likes surprises, so switch to Erie Rate Lock. Get a great rate that stays that way, even after an accident, ticket, or inflation. In fact, it's locked until you change a car, driver, or your address. Your Erie agent in Knoxville is in SureFit RM. Get a quote at 865-684-4900. That's 865-684-4900. Erie Rate Lock does not guarantee continued insurance coverage and it's not available in all states. Looking for a different way to enjoy the Swain event? Then check out Swain Event TV, brought to you by Toyota Knoxville. Follow the show on Periscope and Facebook Live.
All right, welcome back to the show. Swain Event, Fueled by Daddy and Barbecue, Top 100 Barbecue Restaurant in America. Let's get to Jay. Jay, good morning. Swain, good morning, bro. What's up, Jay, man? How you doing, sir? Oh, man, I'm living the dream. It's Friday. You know, I'm going to maybe uh, go up to King Sports, see the Sunfest fireworks. So, uh, you know, it's, it's just living the dream. I like it, man. I like it. As you will know. Swain, I want to ask you something. I, I saw a, uh, the, one of the Twitter accounts that covers recruiting for Tennessee and basically said that it's been a slow July, but he expects things to heat up. And he, he basically had a screenshot of a 24-7 recruiting class projection, and it had us at 19 commitments and had us at the number four class in the country currently. Are you hearing some recruits may start, but some commits may start dropping here or, <laughs> or what? Uh, let me say this. There's a chance that in the next three weeks that Tennessee can have three or four commitments. Wow. So let's say, wow. let's say the next three or four weeks, Tennessee can have three or four commitments. Let's say that. Uh, there's, yeah, there's, that's what it, that's what it about there. Then. Yeah, there's, there's, a, there's a chance. Tennessee's in really good position with a, a few guys and they may be looking to make their announcement before the high school football season starts. So that way they can focus on their high school team and their season, yeah. and so you you might see that there's um, there's some there's some corners, mm -hmm. there is a let's see here there's some defensive line um, candidates that yeah. could be uh, commitments. Okay, so yeah, I, I'm not I'm not a big fan of of trying to ruin kids' commitments. No, and, no, I don't yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, I like for them to have their moment, because I know how it is to be in that position. But Tennessee is in position to probably get two or three corners uh, in this class, and, and maybe two here in the next couple of weeks. And then uh, defensive line looks really, really good. Um, so, yeah, if you heard that July was slow, but it's going to pick up probably in a big way, then I would say that is true. The only thing I would – Add to that, though, is that I don't know that they're going to be guys that are going to jump the recruiting class to number four in the country. They're, they're not. Yeah, picked. yeah, that's what this guy had. He had a – Yeah, it's pretty ambitious. Our score was at like 246, and I think 246.90, and I think that put us just ahead of LSU at number four. Yep, it, it would. I'm looking at the rankings right now. I don't know that the guys that are most likely to commit over the next couple of weeks would jump us that high, though. Mm -hmm. Well, that, that I would – not not saying that the guy the potential commitments aren't big time guys because they are, but they're just not. I mean, you got to have like top ten player in the country to jump that high. Well, let me let me say this, Jay, and again, I I have really uh, backed away from the 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 rankings and stuff like that. I'm I'm not as I don't pay attention to them as much because I know kind of how the staff is going about their evaluations and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Uh, but I do understand, on the other hand, the team rankings, they do uh, connect with the successful teams in college football. I mean, it, you, can't deny, oh, yeah. you can't deny that. But this is what I'll say about the guys that Tennessee has a chance to get commitments from. They're all guys who, who have offers from teams in the SEC that are better than us. Yep. So right. uh, the Alabamas and, and, and the Auburns in the world, the Georgias of the world, uh, these kids have offers from those schools, okay? Committable offers. I don't. Uh, that's what I was getting ready to say. I don't know if they're committable or not because you yeah. sometimes you just really you just really never know. Um, but these players have offers from other schools in the SEC. And Pruitt said, if you want to beat these guys, you got to out recruit some of these guys for the same players. And so um, I know of a few of them that do have SEC offers, and there may be some that that that. Many people may not know about. I mean, we got a player from Mississippi that that a lot of folks didn't know about. You know, Tennessee, mm -hmm. you know, got R Romel Keaton, who's now a U.S. Army All American, um, and not a lot of people knew about him. Chris Ockprogane until he started blowing up. You know, last year Tennessee got the receiver from Florida. I mean, from Georgia that you know decided to go ahead and 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 go to Florida State uh, late in the process. But that kid blew up because Tennessee started to look at. Uh, Georgia high school state championship games and stuff like that and start to look at, at, at 
players and teams, you know, playing in the uh, postseason and say, okay, let's let's go look at the the best players that are playing um, at the end of the season when it, when it matters the most and see if we can find some studs. And they found one, but that kid wound up, wound up going to Florida State. So uh, to answer your question, yes, commitments will be coming. But as far as the team rankings and where Tennessee will fall, I really have no clue. Well, it'll be interesting. I tell you what, man, uh, we, we better get the talent in because when we have to play Oklahoma here in a, in a couple years or whenever it is, my Lord, their recruitment is just off the charts right now. I mean, it's just – it's unreal what old Lincoln Riley's doing. He's kind of taking their recruiting to the, to the next level. And then, you know, Dan Mullen, and I've said this, and I don't know why, but Dan Mullen just does not scare me at Florida. Nope. And I just saw where he's had more decommits than he's had commits this year. I, I just – there's something just in my – deep down in my gut, I just – I am i don't really think he's going to be that special at Florida. I, he, he, he reminds me of Butch Jones, man. I mean, he's coming out here doing some Butch Jones stuff. He, he As far as his ego and so, you know, maybe how corny he is, he reminds me of Butch Jones there. But when it comes to on-the-field coaching – he is the absolute opposite. He's a, he's a real football coach. The guy can develop. He can develop talent. Um, yeah. De- Dan is going to have to develop his talent more than other teams in the SEC, more than Jimbo, more than more than um, Kirby Smart, and, and and hopefully Jeremy Pruitt, because I, I don't see Dan Mullen out recruiting these coaches. I just don't see it. So he's going to have no, to make up for it in development. And just mentality-wise, it when I look at it, Dan Mullen really was a perfect fit at Mississippi State because, like Swain's been saying, Dan Mullen loves Dan Mullen. He loves <laughs> and, Dan Mullen. And Mississippi State's expectations are low, and they Dan Mullen was a god there. And yeah. and he just won you know nine games, had one ten win season, and and was just I mean arguably the greatest coach they've ever had. And so at Florida, there's no expectations like that. You know, McIlwain won the East twice, and he got canned. Mm-hmm. So yeah. I I mean Mullen. Mullen better watch I out. Think, I actually think Moorhead's going to be better than Mullen. I really like Moorhead. I agree. He I seems think, like a really good Moorhead's coach. Be yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, yeah. I, I think Moorhead saved yeah. James Franklin. If he stays. Dude, yeah. Moorhead. Yeah, I, I just – I think – I agree, Jay. I think Moorhead's so good that I don't. I think State's going to be looking for another football coach in three or four years just because, because of how good he can be. Oh, yeah. Well, you know, guys, I saw a stat that was interesting. Since 1998 – no national champion Golly. ever. I'll put it like this: every national champion since '98 has had a top four class the previous four years before they won it. I mean, that just shows you, or a top five class, excuse me. So that just shows you, you know, Philip Fulmer was great, but Philip Fulmer was great because he had draft picks all over the field. I mean, some years it's like the whole damn. Oh dang! I just cut the That's whole okay. dang defense. <laughs> the whole dang defense just had a, a, a draft pick, you know, so that's what we got to get back to. We got to have draft picks everywhere. Yep. That That's when you know you're going to be great. Swain, I'm sorry for cussing. I try to keep it. No, it's okay. Uh, you can, you can say, you can say that word. You can say the D word. Okay. You can't say the S, you can't say the S, the B, yes. and, and the F. You can't say that one. You can't say okay, those three. No, that'll, <laughs> that'll never pop out on the, uh, on here, so. Anyways, man, y'all have a good day, and uh, I'll give y'all a call later on. Thank you, Jay. Hope you have a great weekend. Speaking of weekend, got this Swain Event Cup that changes colors when it gets cold. It, you know, it is Friday. So, you know, maybe maybe if you have a Swain Event Cup out here on a good Friday, maybe you should start your weekend early with a nice cold beverage. Maybe. Like, like a tea. Cold. Cold. You'd have cold tea. Yeah. I do know that much about but tea. It, but it, but it, because it's brown, it wouldn't necessarily look great. It wouldn't be Tennessee orange, probably. Exactly. It'd be doo-doo orange. It would just be Clemson, diff- Texas it w- orange. It would be different, yeah. Like, if you put, like, a you know Coke in here or something like that, or, like, a Mellow Yellow in here, something like that, uh, it, it would be a different type of orange. But if you put a clear liquid in here and it gets really cold you get pretty you get pretty orange party now if you get cold milk in there we're talking real tennessee orange pantone nice to know not what is it 151 151 yeah yeah, yeah pantone right. 151 that is right cold milk in the swain event cup and uh we'll we'll do something soon 
so that way we uh, extend the opportunity for more folks to have it because it's it's really cool man it's a really cool cup i find myself grabbing it every time i want something to drink it's it's kind of weird 865-255-03 for what is coming up next so stay with us Today looks to be sunny with a high near 89 and a low around 68. There is a 20% chance of rain tomorrow with a high near 88 and a low around 69. Wednesday, the chance of showers sticks around at 30% with highs in the mid 80s. Weather on the Swain event is brought to you by Bee Dry. If your basement is wet or cracked, Bee Dry can help. BeeDry.com. Do you have cracks in your foundation? A wet basement or a nasty, leaky crawl space? Our listeners have heard about them on the Swain event for over a year, and now it's time to make the call. Give Be Dry Waterproofing and Foundation Repair the opportunity to fix your home's problem. Since 1958, that's right, nearly 60 years, Be Dry has been solving basement, crawl space, and foundation problems throughout the country. Be Dry only uses high quality materials from reputable manufacturers. They back their installations with some of the best warranties in the industry to provide homeowners with added peace of mind. They are truly an A plus company. Whenever you start experiencing a wet basement, leaky crawl space, or a cracked foundation, remember these three words better call Be Dry. Reach out to Be Dry today at 865-662-5238 to schedule your free appointment. That's 865-662-5238. Remember, better call Be Dry. For what is coming up on the Swain event. With the hot weather and humidity comes mosquitoes and other pests. Let Southeast Termite and Pest Control take care of that problem for you. They offer one-time or package treatments that control biting adults as well as larvae. Southeast Termite and Pest Control has been in business since 1971 and is local and family-owned. They offer free estimates and quotes with no obligations. So don't get bit anymore. Go with the pest control company you can trust. Call Southeast Termite and Pest Control at 865-925-3700 or find them online at southeasttermite.com. Hey Annie, you're the spokesperson for Toyota Knoxville, right? That's right. Why should I buy from Toyota Knoxville? Are you looking for new or used vehicles? Does it matter? No, because Toyota Knoxville has over 390 new Toyotas on the ground and over 350 pre-owned vehicles available to choose from. Okay, so big selection. And a lifetime warranty at no charge on all new and select pre-owned vehicles. A lifetime warranty. A non-factory limited lifetime powertrain warranty with unlimited miles. Plus 30 years of experience in Knoxville, not just serving our customers, serving our community. And the buying experience? Hello, it's Toyota Knoxville. Read the reviews. Talk to anybody that's been there. Okay, okay. Where am I going? Toyota Knoxville is at I-40 and the Lover Road exit. Go to Parkside Drive. You can't miss it. Can I tell them Annie sent me? I wish you would. If you're passionate about the car you drive, come meet the people that are passionate about the way they sell at Toyota Knoxville. ToyotaKnoxville.com. Warranty good at participating dealers. At some point in your life, you're going to need an attorney. You need a guy like Jerrica Steele with the law firm of Butler, Vines, and Babb. Jerrica Steele is East Tennessee born, and he understands what giving his all truly means. To Jared, every case is big, and every client is important. He will aggressively push your case to make sure you are quickly paid every dollar that you deserve. Give Jerrica Steele a call, 865-244-3933, and talk with him directly. His office is located at 27. 27- 01 Kingston Pike. So if you've been injured in a car wreck, let Jerrica Steele and Butler Vines and Bab fight for you. We have all made the mistake of dropping or breaking our smartphones. See? But did you know that you can have it repaired for a fraction of the cost that it takes to replace it? Well, you can. Because iDrop is the area's leading mobile repair store, home of the one hour or less phone repair, one year parts warranty, and number one customer service. Broken screens, cracked cameras, charging ports, batteries, you break it, we'll fix it. If you didn't break your phone, protect it with one of our leading accessories such as LifeProof, OtterBox, UAG, and Sipico, Caseology, and Spec. Visit our West Hills location at 7115 Kingston Pike between Office Depot and Hardy's or call 865-888-9740 and speak with our trained technicians to see how we can get your phone working today.
Butch Jones replacing Philip Fulmer on the Jumbotron. For what? People getting drunk and stumbling into the wrong house. For what? Butch saying a chart told him to kick an extra point instead of going for two. For what? People who break the law while breaking the law. For what? All right, it's time for For What here in the Swain event. Ben, Charlie, what do we have today? I am giving Tiger Woods a For What. I know we were talking about this during the break, so I'm aware that Swain and Charlie disagree with me. Um, but if you were not on social media yesterday, Tiger Woods was kind of, I don't even know the right word for it, just under scrutiny, I guess, for He bar. got asked questions about it. Yeah. He, he, took, he took a lot of heat. From a video, I guess it was on the Golf Network or Golf Channel, whatnot, uh, of him, in my opinion, barging through a group of kids who were trying to uh, get their autograph. And my for what for Tiger doesn't go to him not signing auto- signing the little kids' autographs. My for what is for the way he kind of went about doing it. Um, the kids uh, were kind of they were kind of blocking an entrance. But to the right of the kids, there's plenty of room to walk around them. Um, and, and in my opinion, since they are little kids, that would have been the proper thing to do. So I'm not giving Tiger for what for not signing the autograph because I get it. In golf, it's the ultimate mental game. That and baseball are the two most mental games in all sports, in my opinion. And so I get it. You got to be locked in. So I, I understand not signing the autograph. My for what goes to the way he handled it. I thought instead of barging through the kids uh, the way I thought he did, he could have like, kind of stepped to the side and walked around them. I thought that was the right thing to do since they are kids. And I get the whole golf etiquette thing and you're not supposed to ask for autographs during it. But these aren't grown adults. They're, they're kids. At the end of the day, they're kids. And he could have stepped to the right. Um, last week, Chris Bryant, Chicago Cub, MVP, um, big-time baseball player, was doing a rehab assignment with the Smokies, and as you could imagine, the entire stadium was absolutely sold out and packed, wanting to get Chris Bryant's autograph, wanting to see him play, and before the game, there are tons of kids lined up waiting to get his autograph, and Chris Bryant handled it perfectly and said, I can't sign right now, I've got to go get ready for the game, and he went around them, went and got ready for the game, and then afterwards, he came back and he signed autographs. In my opinion, and I get it's a little different situation, but in my opinion, that's the correct way of handling it. So once yeah. again, my forward goes to Tiger for barging through the kids. I, I thought he could have kind of gone around them, handled it a little bit better, in my opinion. It's, it's it's not a great look. This is in no way uncommon. In golf, that's very typical. It takes so much focus to play professional golf at a high level. Uh, and so most guys at – at best, they'll do autographs after a round. Tiger could have could have either walked around them or said to the kids, "Hey, find me after the round. I'll, I'll get you autographs." You know, something like that. But at the end of the day, it's really I I don't know. This is not not a not a big thing because he had a round of golf to go play in the British Open. I mean, that's I know. I'm also one that like I enjoy watching Tiger play golf. But since his return, I haven't like fell in love with him like many people have. Like I don't. I don't give him the benefit of the doubt anymore because of what has happened in the past. Well, that's yeah, that's fair. Uh, but I I got it for what for a couple of YouTubers actually. It's a very millennial for what. A couple of guys I, I don't really know. So it's KSI and Logan Paul. He, he, I know Logan Paul because he he filmed a dead body and got in a lot of trouble for it. He was at the Suicide Forest in Japan and filmed a dead body, and it was like a big dust up. I it was on like Good Morning America and stuff. That's how I I don't know who KSI is. Though. Unreal. But they're two of the most popular guys on YouTube. KSI has 17 million subscribers, and Logan Paul has like 15 million. Like, they're giant, giant celebrities in the world of children. And these guys are having a boxing match, um, apparently. And so they had they had one of those, you know, pre-boxing match press conferences, like, to get everyone hyped, and they go in and they, like, talk trash to each other. And it was all kids, like a thousand kids in this place where they had this press conference. And apparently there was, like, a fight at the press conference, and it got ended early. And so all these kids poured out onto the street and started a riot <laughs> in the middle of London, England. Uh, I guess we, we got to go to break. There's a little more of this story to tell. But uh, these two guys, I mean, you have so much power over these children, and they started a riot in London because they're having a boxing match. Come on, folks. What are we doing? Unreal. Hour three coming up around the corner. Swain event fueled by Dead End Barbecue.
By now, you know that Muya has the best burgers in Knoxville. Their beef is never frozen, they have all natural turkey burgers and black bean veggie burgers, not to mention they make their buns in house every day. But now, you can also get 100% all beef hot dogs or, wait for it, all natural chicken sandwiches. Trust me, these chicken sandwiches put chicken restaurants to shame. So stop into Muya and taste the difference. Located at 7301 Kingston Pike, right by Better Match. Hey Annie, you're the spokesperson for Toyota Knoxville, right? That's right. Why should I buy from Toyota Knoxville? Are you looking for new or used vehicles? Does it matter? No, because Toyota Knoxville has over 390 new Toyotas on the ground and over 350 pre-owned vehicles available to choose from. Okay, so big selection. And a lifetime warranty at no charge on all new and select pre-owned vehicles. A lifetime warranty. A non-factory limited lifetime powertrain warranty with unlimited miles. Plus, 30 years of experience in Knoxville, not just serving our customers, serving our community. And the buying experience? Hello, it's Toyota Knoxville. Read the reviews. Talk to anybody that's been there. Okay, okay. Where am I going? Toyota Knoxville is at I-40 and the Lover Road exit. Go to Parkside Drive. You can't miss it. Can I tell them Annie sent me? I wish you would. If you're passionate about the car you drive, come meet the people that are passionate about the way they sell. At Toyota Knoxville. ToyotaKnoxville.com. Warranty good at participating dealers. There is a 30% chance of showers today, partly sunny with a high of 89 and a low around 69. Tomorrow, there is a 60% chance of rain, partly cloudy with a high around 86 and a low near 68. Sunday, showers and thunderstorms likely, mostly cloudy with a high in the low 80s. Weather on the Swain event is brought to you by B-Dry. If your basement is wet or cracked, B-Dry can help. B-Dry.com Hour 3 of the Swain event is brought to you by the Low T Center and LowTCenter.com. Do you know your numbers? Feel like you again. Let us help. If you want to chop it up with the fellas, call the Be Dry Waterproofing Hotline at So Charlie's for what include includes millennials um, that caused a, a riot. Don't let your kids watch YouTube. That's the <laughs> the, the lesson to be learned there, because there are these guys who have these giant, like I said, fifteen million children oh, yeah. that are fans, and they're they're boxing and fighting and starting riots. Like what? What? Don't oh. let your seven year old watch these. YouTube guys. is 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 highly monitored in this household for sure. Yeah. And um, social media is, is is great in a lot of areas, but terrible in a, in a lot of other areas. And um, you can see, like you can you can be walking down the street and see someone in danger or needing some help, but instead of going to help that person without any thought, like now people want like I got to get a video and put want, it on Twitter. Yeah, you got documented. Yeah. No, I mean. Go help. That's that's the thing that stinks about social media and the cell phone age, but that's that's the way it is. It stinks. Um, on a more serious note, because this is this is Knoxville, this is Tennessee. We talk Tennessee football. We talk about all the news, a couple things um, that that happened yesterday, um, a staff change there that we will, that we they will get to. Uh, but unfortunately, uh, former Tennessee quarterback Sterling Hinton uh, was charged with uh, criminal simulation for depositing a check for more than $95,000, according to uh, Jimmy Himes. And um, Sterling's quote is, I unknowingly deposited a bad check. This is what. Sterling the Pearl said, he says, no funds were taken. 
and I just have to trust the process right now. And um, it's always easy to kind of jump to conclusions when someone gets arrested and assume that someone is guilty and to proven innocent. And I've known Sterl for, for years and years and years. I know what type of dude he is. And um, this is not the first time I've had a, a friend get arrested. My best friend, Robert Meacham, was, was arrested for – uh, child support issues when someone stole millions of dollars from him and put him in a really bad spot. But that doesn't mean that me, as a radio show host, I'm not going to bring it up because that's my that's my job. Um, but there's a process that needs to, to take place, and that process is figuring out uh, innocence or guilt. Uh, the arrest warrant says that the check – valued at $95,000, uh, came from a market research firm in Nashville. And the president of that firm uh, told the police that the check was counterfeit, counterfeit and not from her business. And so they need to work out the details. I know what type of person against Earl is, and hopefully this is just an honest mistake. But once details come out and they sort through everything and we get the 100% truth, I think we can then uh, discuss this a little bit more. But uh, I did reach out to Sterl and just uh, offered words of encouraging, encouragement by you know, letting him know that if he needed anything, let me know as a friend. And if there was anything uh, that he would like to say on the record, and um, he just you know, pretty much um, said exactly what I just said from Jimmy Himes, is that you know, it's a process, and the process has to play out. And I totally respect that. And I know Sterl has – been through you know some some hurdles in his life and he's beat adversity before and there's not a doubt in my mind that he would do it again if you are a Swain Event Plus subscriber you probably heard of Sterl's story and the fact that he is in the position that he's in now uh, as successful as he is as a uh, role model here in Knoxville working with uh, young men uh, DJing events uh, He's been very successful, and he's doing that because of the adversity that he over overcame um, in years past. And so, not doubt in my mind he'll do the same. I just hope that it's a misunderstanding. But if it's not a misunderstanding and uh, he is guilty, then he will have to be held accountable, just like anyone anyone else. But hoping hoping the best for Sterl uh, there as he as he deals with this. Now, I, I have some people close to me that. Uh, at the beginning of the whole email scam where they say you have been chosen by the prince to, you know, you've been awarded this money and, you know, we need you to go and deposit this money. And, um, you know, I know someone that fell for that and um, did not know what it was. And um, – what they do is is they send you this this fake check, this fake money order. You have no clue. And this person You have to give them your financial information to to quote unquote get the money. Well, well this this And then they take your info. Well this typically Well this example was um all that was given was a money order. Hmm. And um this person got the money order and Took it to a place just to see if he was real or not. That was that was kind of the plan. Hey, let's go see if this thing is real. This sounds too good to be true. I've never heard of this before. This is kind of when this stuff started. And he was treated like he was trying to cash a bad check or he was trying to get over. And he found himself in some big trouble. But it's not like he was intentionally trying to cash a bad check. He was simply trying to see if it was real or not. Um, but there, there's scams out here and you just got to be very, very careful because you are the one that's held accountable if you fall victim to it. So I, I hope that's the case here with Sterl, but, um, as a, a Tennessee family member, cause I treat guys who play Tennessee, I treat them like family. You're going to have family that sometimes make mistakes. That doesn't mean they're not family anymore. And I hopefully this is this is a mistake that does not get Sterling in trouble. This is not 
uh, a mistake that was done consciously. This is hopefully this was a mistake that uh, Stur got caught into because he was just a victim. But either way, it's a it's a mistake. And we've had players here, at Tennessee, former players that have found themselves in in legal trouble, have gotten in trouble, made one bad decision, and we we can sit here and talk about how we're a big family and how Vault Twitter is a big family and how, you know, there's n- no place that's more special than Tennessee because of how close we are. That's also in the good times and the bad times. And when a guy gets arrested, that doesn't mean he's not family anymore. Because I got some family members that have served some prison time, some real prison time. And they were family before they went in, and they were family when they got out. And what you what you hope is that they improve and that you, as a family member, are there to support them and help them um, move on, move past it, and become a better person. And so, innocent or guilty here with Sterl, he's still family at the end of the day. And I wish nothing but the best for him because, again, he's family. Now, a staff change took place yesterday, and that is – um, that affected the the recruiting office there um, because uh, Brett Thiessen, via his Twitter account, basically announced that he would be moving on. He is the assistant, or he was the assistant director of recruiting, uh, but he announced via his Twitter account that he is moving on to a different opportunity. Um, and so uh, Brett Thiessen, assistant director of recruiting, will no longer be on Jeremy Pruitt's staff. Uh, was he let go? Did he leave on his own? Um, I don't know if it really matters or not. I will say this. If you were a part of Bush Jones's staff, if you are connected to Bush Jones in any way, you better be dang good because – Jeremy Pruitt is looking to replace you. <laughs> I mean, you better be good. You better give Jeremy Pruitt a reason to keep you. I repeat, you better give Pruitt a reason to keep you because if you are associated with Bush Jones and what has happened in the last few years here at Tennessee, you better be good because it looks like Pruitt's approach is we're getting rid of all the stank. And you may not be guilty. You may just be an innocent bystander here. You know, you look at Robert Gillespie. Yeah, he he's a good running back coach, connected to Butch. Some of Butch's excuse making kind of rubbed off on Gillespie. Some of, some of Butch's mentality rubbed off on Gillespie. Wasn't a good fit. And so, guys who have been held over from Butch's staff, that means that they're really really good. There's a few of them out here on this staff. Um, but Brett Thiessen is, is um, he's he's out of there. Yeah, I I kind of look at this and think anybody that was on Butch Jones' staff, I don't think it's a bad thing for them to move on. Not necessarily everybody, but there are some that, I mean, maybe it's in their best interest just because of not them personally, but because of the the stark difference between Butch Jones and Jeremy Pruitt. I mean, they're two polar opposite people, and I just don't see. <laughs> somebody who worked for Butch Jones necessarily jiving well with the Jeremy Pruitt staff. Not to say that nobody's capable of doing it. Just look at Condridge. Condridge has outlasted every every coach over the last decade. Uh, Condridge's untouchable, man. He ain't, ain't, ain't got nothing to do with that. He you know, he rarely deals with the deals with the head coach in that way where you know Thiessen's, uh role, I mean, he's hand in hand with the coach. He's an assistant director of recruiting. I mean that's that is <laughs> It's been – you're, you're, you're dealing with a coach every single day. Yeah. I mean, I guess he – Condridge and really Roger Frazier, he's made it all all the way through everything. The equipment manager, for those that don't know. I mean, he's been with Fulmer since the, what, the, the 80s, I think, he's, early 90s. He's, he's been here at Tennessee before Fulmer. He was here at Johnny Majors, yeah, uh, Robert, Roger Frazier. Yeah. And Robert I will say this – Bush Jones folks try to mess with that 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 um, 
equipment staff, guys who have been in the same position for years and years and years, Bush Jones tried to mess with that equipment staff, and uh, he was not so successful. <laughs> One phone call was made, and that was that was the end of that. Don't mess with Fresh. Do not mess with anybody over there. Well, yeah. Yeah, you don't, you, don't, you don't mess with those guys. They've been, they've been in that same position for years and years and years, and they have not done anything wrong, have been uh, the reason for any failures. I mean, they operate at a high level. So um, just wanted to make sure we touch on that during the show with uh, Sterl and uh, Brett Thiessen. A couple, couple, couple updates there as it relates to Tennessee football. Swain so event, hour three, back by – um, low T Center and LowTCenter.com. Stay with us. Hour three continues after this. Hour three of the Swain event is brought to you by the Low T Center and LowTCenter.com. Do you know your numbers? Feel like you again. Let us help. VFL's Jason Swain and Ty Kelly here with our Men on Football and Smoothie segment. Let's discuss some of our favorite smoothies and how they impact our lives. TK. Man, tell me which smoothie comes to mind when you think about playing defense. Swaino, the Peanut Butter Power Plus and the Power Punch Plus provide the energy needed to make plays every time they take the field. Then you have the Gladiator and the Hulk. Nutrition, every dominant player has to have. Bottom line, everyone wants to be a dominant player. Now, Swain, you tell me about the offensive side of the ball. TK, it's simple. You always score with Smoothie King. The shredder personifies what we are going to do to opposing defenses. The berry punch and activator will light up the scoreboard. And in case we need to go into overtime, the pure recharge will put us over the top for the win. Swain O, you know I love football and Smoothie King. I'm a VFL, a Smoothie King for life. The chocolate gladiator and the chocolate shredder with the scoop of peanut butter. Oh, that's my go-to smoothie. They get a chest bump all day. Yes, sir. This concludes our Men on Football and Smoothie King segment for today. Don't forget the Sip by Sip program. Use Smoothie King as a meal replacement five or more times a week, and you will feel and see the difference. Smoothie King, the healthy alternative to fast food. Delicious and nutritious. TK, don't forget the peanut butter. Yeah, boy. Gentlemen, when it comes to health and quality of life, there are numbers every man needs to know, including our testosterone number. I recommend going to Low T Center. They make it quick and easy to get your levels checked, and it's covered by most health insurance. Low T levels can make you feel tired and grumpy. It can raise your cholesterol, cause weight gain, and loss of muscle mass. Low T Center's physicians specialize in treating low T in men. Listen to me here. They know men's health and are reinventing men's health care. Call 865-392-1388 or go to Low T Center. Com. It's Christmas in July at Better Mattress. Better Mattress has teamed up with Home Depot and with select purchases, you can get a free Weber grill or choose a free adjustable base or a free headboard footboard while supplies last. Better Mattress has brands you know like Tempur-Pedic and Sealy, plus the brand I love, the Better Mattress brand, handcrafted in East Tennessee. Go to Better Mattress and get a free adjustable base free headboard footboard, or free Weber grill while supplies last. Six area locations, BEDRmattress.com. Do you have cracks in your foundation? A wet basement or a nasty, leaky crawl space? Our listeners have heard about them on the Swain event for over a year, and now it's time to make the call. Give B-Dry Waterproofing and Foundation Repair the opportunity to fix your home's problem. Since 1958, that's right, nearly 60 years, B-Dry has been solving basement, crawl space, and foundation problems throughout the country. B-Dry only uses high-quality materials from reputable manufacturers. They back their installations with some of the best warranties in the industry to provide homeowners with added peace of mind. They are truly an A-plus company. Whenever you start experiencing a wet basement, leaky crawl space, or a cracked foundation, remember these three words. Better call B-Dry. Reach out to B-Dry today at 865-662-5238 to schedule your free appointment. That's 865-662-5238. Remember, better call B-Dry. 
All right, team, listen up. It's tailgating time again in Tennessee. But most importantly, team, you're going to need to refi that tailgate and the truck it's attached to. With a refinanced auto loan with Alcoa Tan Federal Credit Union with their got that promotion. They'll give you up to $500 for your debt. Are you serious, coach? That's right, Johnny. Alcoa Tan will pay you up to $500 for your debt. Now, let's get out there and spread the word. Say it with me. Alcoa Tan, Alcoa Tan, Alcoa Tan. ATFCU is an equal housing lender. At some point in your life, you're going to need an attorney. You need a guy like Jerry Castile with the law firm of Butler, Vines, and Bab. Jerry Castile is East Tennessee born, and he understands what giving his all truly means. To Jared, every case is big, and every client is important. He will aggressively push your case to make sure you are quickly paid every dollar that you deserve. Give Jerry Castile a call, 865-244-3933, and talk with him directly. His office is located at 27. 27- 01 Kingston Pike. So if you've been injured in a car wreck, let Jerry Castile and Butler Vines and Bab fight for you. For a replay of each day's Swain Event TV, like us on Facebook. Swain event, Fueled by Daddy and Barbecue. Today's lunch special is the bacon wrap shrimp and grits. Woo! With smoke, sausage, uh, cheese grits, wild boar sauce at Daddy and Barbecue. It is unreal. Uh, now, the cups are starting to, the Swain event cups are starting to pick up a lot of traction. We did we, we did a promotion that lasted, well, I want to say, two and a half, three months that ended July 15th that with your Triple OG, OG, VIP subscription to Swain Event Plus. The 598 level. <laughs> you get one of those included uh, there. Now, we ended that promotion on the 15th. And so, uh, we're going to bring the cups back. Yeah, we've since had a bunch of questions from people yes. like, how can I get the cup? Yeah, need to get some more because they went out like hotcakes. Uh, we've had to replace some because you – SPS don't know how to handle the packages with care sometimes, so we had to replace a few of people who got their cups and they were uh, damaged. And so we will make sure that we um, have another opportunity for those folks who want the, this cup to get it. Uh, I think it's really, really cool, really awesome. And so a um, little surprised that it took off the way it did, but, hey, we'll, we'll do it again uh, real soon. The Orange Attic says, I told y'all Dan Mullen is a fancy Bush Jones with quarterback development. Yeah. <laughs> yep. He's the fancy Bush Jones that knows how to coach. Yep. I mean, they they possess a lot of the same same qualities, man, I, I tell you. They really do. I was I knew that Dan Mullen was, was going to be high on the priority list for Tennessee, looking for a head coach. And I'll be honest, I was a little nervous about how Dan Mullen would fit here at Tennessee. Fit. Just like I was nervous about Mike Leach and Gresciano. Not even on the football level, just on a personality level, um, how he would be able to attract other assistant coaches. Dan Mullen has had dust-ups with his defensive coaches. He's had issues. And I was I was a little uh, worried about that. Um not to say I would have not been on board with the Dan Mullen hire because he's a good football coach, but I would I would have had some concerns. I think it's about fits when you look at the Tennessee job. Rick Barnes obviously is a great fit because of what he means to the community, how he carries himself. Um, he's a really good fit. And he's, a good, and he's a good basketball coach. Um, he's a good fit, really good fit. Conzo. Great man, great man. Mm-hmm. Probably a better man than his, you know, the coaches who coached before him and after him. But Maybe. it was a well. <laughs> Not sure that's in question. <laughs> well, 
the fit just it wasn't right, and I hate that it wasn't because I love me some Conzo Mart. He he played that slow basketball, and people didn't like it. Yeah, and, but it was it was after watching Bruce for all his years, people yeah, were not having it. It's but. about it's about fits and what what I know and what you have heard and maybe know too about some of the issues surrounding Tennessee football. Tennessee needed a certain guy, and. I don't think there's a perfect fit out there as a football coach, but I think Pruitt possesses a lot of qualities that Tennessee needs right now. Tennessee needs someone with credibility as a coach, as a high-powered recruiter, and enough confidence to come in and say, I don't care that this is my first year being the head coach. Yes, you gave me the opportunity. Have y'all noticed that he keeps saying we chose to come here, that we chose y'all? I love that confidence. We don't need someone that comes in and is like, oh, I'm pinching myself. I can't believe I'm the Tennessee coach. I can't believe y'all gave me an opportunity. Quit I, talking like Bush Jones. I don't want that. I don't. I want a guy that comes in and is like, y'all lucky to have me because I know what I can do. Whether or not he is successful or not, we need that. We need that. And I want to get something really clear here. I ain't doing no PR for, for Jerry Pruitt. I meant to do it for a, a total of 20 seconds and got a, a weird vibe when I met him. I don't know if it was good or bad, to be honest, because <laughs> he kind of looked at me like, yeah, I, kn I know you are, and then just, just left. And so, like, it wasn't a handshake. Hey, what's up, brother? A fist bump. Oh, uh, you, know, uh, you know this person? I know this person that you know? It, it wasn't like that. It wasn't like that at all. So, I, I didn't really know what to expect from, the, from the, the first time I met him. I have a job to do, and that's to tell you how I feel, whether it's good or bad. But I would do it with respect as much as I can. And what I see is that Jeremy Pruitt, is what Tennessee needs right now. Before we even play a game, he's what we need. We need to come in and mix things up. We need to let some folks go. We need to change this. We need to do this. And it's going to ruffle some feathers. And Coach Former and him, they're not going to see eye to eye on everything. Coach Former is successful in his own right. You don't, you don't get to where you, what Coach Former is unless you believe in what you do in your process. But Coach Former ain't coached in 10 years. So what worked 10 years ago may be different in 2018. I mean, it is different, and it, the college football has changed so much. It, it, Playoffs, rules. It has. Um, safety, targeting wasn't a thing 10 years ago. The offenses have changed. Yeah, that, yeah. that would be the, the biggest change right there is, like, the the structure of how college football is played and, and what's really successful. Totally it's different. Totally different yeah. now. Yeah. It's a different yeah. world. I think Coach Former is what Tennessee needs right now. But both of these guys are doing something for the first time. Coach Fulmer's never been an AD. Jaron Pruitt has never been an AD. One thing Coach Fulmer knows is how he was al allowed and how he had the support to be successful as he was when he was at his peak because of Doug Dickey. And so if he can be the support system that Doug Dickey was for him, if he can be that for Jaron Pruitt, that's great. But they're both learning on the job. Pruitt knows how to win championships in the SEC today. He knows how to do that. He knows how to put together a really good defense. He knows how to recruit. Coach Former values recruiting, but recruiting is different now than it was in 08 and in the 2000s. So they're not going to see eye to eye on everything. But you know what they are going to see eye to eye on? Winning. 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 And – I said this when Charlie joined the show. I said, man, yes, I've had the show. The show's been successful for the most part. It ain't where we want it to be. Got a long way to go. You coming from what you're doing. And if you're going to come on this show and just agree with everything that I'm saying, then it's not going to be a good fit. There's a difference between off-air relationship, on-air relationship. We have a job to do, and that is to put out really good content, have gr you know great conversations, and if you feel a certain type of way, if you have an opinion, you better be able to back it up, but I don't want it to be the same as mine just because my name is on the show. 
you don't want people around you like that. You don't want a bunch of yes men. Yes men will get you killed in these streets. Yes men will get you hyped up so much to, that you think you can beat someone up, and you can't. Yes men will get you turned into Mark Rick getting, quote, unquote, disrespected by Jeremy Pruitt. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, you in you in a group get complacent. You you in a group with your friends, and you out and about, and your friends hyping you up. Oh yeah, yeah, you can take them, you can take them, get them. No nah, man, you can't take them. Your friends hyping you up. You about to get your butt kicked. That guy's bigger than you. <laughs> so friends can get you killed, can get you beat down if they're not telling you the truth. You need people around you telling you the truth. If I got a a a, a monster in my nose, is what I say with my kids. But it's a booger, okay? If you have a little something in your nose, you need some people around you to tell you, hey, hey, Swain, man, you got some, you got some, bro, you got some, some Rice Krispies in your nose there. You got you, some craters up yeah, there. Yeah, you might want to fix that. Don't let me go out here in these streets looking a mess. Tell me the truth. That's what I want to know. If someone doesn't like the show, they don't like a comment, you're not going to hurt my feelings if you tell me. Tell me because I, we want to make the adjustment. We want to be as best – as good as we can. You got to have good mentors in your corner to be able to tell you the truth. And so there's not a big deal if Coach Fulmer and Jerm Pruitt do, don't see eye to eye. So uh, sorry to go on soapbox, but it's just the truth. Well, geez, Swain, why do you have to go on a soapbox all the time? I'm sorry, man. Somebody got to tell the truth well, right here. I'd rather listen to Turkey Man talk than you, so can we get to Turkey Man? I'm just saying, man, somebody got to tell the truth right here. Just well, saying. I mean, that's going to happen now that uh, Charlie's good buddy is down three, four hours south. Well, we won't have a we won't have a PR guy. I kid you not. I saw him on my TV the other day asking a question at media days. Boop. Turn my TV off. <laughs> True story. Good, good good luck good luck down there because um, Kirby ain't playing that. And don't steal our water. Yeah, good luck with that. Let's get to Turkey Man. Turkey Man, good morning. Good morning, individual. Good morning, individual. Gobble gobble. Oh, gobble gobble. I I hope you guys have a great weekend and. Uh, have a safe travels, whatever you're doing. But uh, you know, I I was uh, I, I was going to ask the question to Charlie there. I figured that high degree, you know what? What is a carny barker or carnival barker? What what is that? So my understanding is that back in the the olden days when there were you know your traditional carnival or kind of a circus type of thing. When they would roll into town and have you know the big tent and everything, your your carny barker was the the officiant, I guess. You know he'd be like, "Come on, come all to the circus or whatever." You know he he was that dude. According to um, Google, but he he wasn't he wasn't the talent. He wasn't he wasn't what made the carnival. He was cool. a hype man almost. Exactly. According to Google, a carnival barker was a person who attempted to attract patrons to entertainment events such as go. a circus. By extorting passing public, extorting passing public, describing attractions of the show and emphasizing the variety. Yep. The hype come, man. Come see the Blow, bearded lady. Blowing smoke up your butt, quite frankly. And so so I say there's a side note there saying, and they, they generally have their hit, their pictures put on top of the billboard, or in our case, the Jumbotron. Yes, very rarely. Very uncommon. <laughs> okay. I, uh. Uh, I got a uh, kind of a uh, comment, I guess is the word. Uh, you know, he's talking about Pruitt. One thing about Pruitt uh, uh, that he's gonna have to he's gonna have to listen and pay attention, to Coach uh, Former about is number one. He's got Coach Former's got a got a championship ring. At he was the coach when he got it. He was the man when he got it. That's one thing, and that's something different from from all the other stops, uh, assistant coach that, that has won championships. Got he may, he had a hand in it, but he wasn't the shot caller. The other thing is former former I heard him tell you this two or three times. He knows where the bones are buried, and and I I, I if I was if I was coach Bury, I'd I'd want to know where those bones are buried, so I'd want to give her information. That's a couple of things that I thought of just kind of laid out there that thing and just a just a just a comment on the way out is i did get to get to see a little bit didn't watch much of it but i don't need your permission coach uh, 
made a little statement. All right, all right, Derek Mason, <laughs> Turkey Man. <laughs> I see where you're going. Let's ride. Let's ride. Let's ride. And I and I, and I like Derrick Mason. I, I hate I, I hate yeah. that. I hate that I like Derrick Mason. I really but, do like him. But you know what? I'm I'm liking to be able to make fun of Derrick Mason again. I couldn't do that before. So well, that's, that's a good that's a good. Technically, statement. you still can't turkey man. It, it, it actually, it should be in, like it should him. be in reverse turkey man uh, because you know we we were calling him radio at the beginning when in his first year. <laughs> Uh, yeah, we were joking on calling him radio, and then you know making fun, neck. yeah, making fun of him because he didn't have a neck. And then somewhere along the line, he got a neck, and he started coaching up <laughs> his team, and he beat us. So, man, ain't really much we can say right now about Derrick well, Mason. I thought Derrick Mason did a really good job yesterday at SC Media Days, to be honest. Yeah, yeah. Now, well, huh? Where would he you rank him on your power rankings, dude? I'm not ranking he didn't, he coaches. He didn't need my permission. Yeah, well, oh, okay. Well, Turkey, hey guys, have a good. Thank you, here. thank you, Turkey Man. I mean, he, you know, he he admitted, you know, Tennessee fans outweigh our fans five to one. He was, you know, he was very complimentary of, of Tennessee, and it felt weird. I don't, I don't want to be friends with you, Derek Mason. I respect Derek Mason. I really like him as a coach, but I, I don't want you talking nice about our, about our, See, about our fans and program. I, I don't want that. I want to hate. I'm with you, Swain, and I, I like Derek Mason. His players love him. Yeah, they do. I want to see Derek Mason go somewhere else and flourish. We we were saying that actually before you got here, Ben. The the SEC network was on here on our little TV, and Derek Mason was talking, and we were both saying like, "Man, he could be a great coach if he wasn't at Vanderbilt." I really I, like. I really think he'd be <laughs> if he really could good. Just coach. be somewhere else. Yeah. Oh well. And he I wants. Also, he he wants, if the right opportunity arises, he. He's gone. He's he's gone. He should. Like if, he if was, he wins he was eight look, games this year, he was looking two years ago. Yeah, he was looking out west. Yeah. If uh, <clears throat> I always wonder, I don't think Stanford would bring him back because he hasn't had overwhelming success at Vanderbilt. He hasn't had James Franklin level success at Vanderbilt. And I think that that's what it would take to get the Stanford job. But I do wonder if. He's a West Coast if he, guy. If he would be the first call, he's a West Coast guy. Well, one of the first calls. Although he did get it wrong yesterday, it wasn't five to one. It was. It's more like ten, fifteen to one in terms of Tennessee fans to Vanderbilt fans. Yeah, but be careful, man. We can't really talk. We can't talk too much trash. We can talk a little bit, but at a certain point, you gotta stop. When you lose it, when you lose to that team. Yeah, I know. We, we can talk trash with West Virginia all day long. We can talk trash to them about basketball because West Virginia fans are acting like, like, they did something last year. Y'all ain't doing anything either. You ain't do anything last seven, year. Seven and six, and you lost the Utah whole yeah. game. Congrats. I yeah, I mean, you ain't do anything. Neither one of us did anything last year. Now, you have the better team on paper, but that's it. So, that's a good back and forth. You can you can trash talk. Because what you did last year doesn't matter this year between West Virginia and Tennessee. But, I mean, Georgia fans, hey. they, got, they, got the, they got the upper hand right now. And, and Florida fans have the I mean, upper hand got, right they, now. They got the upper hand right South now. Carolina. Tennessee did some things last year. They were just all really bad things that you don't want to do. You don't want to be in Lexington and catch a Hail Mary at the two-yard line. Uh, you don't want to have to play in a monsoon. You don't want to get blown out by Vanderbilt on senior day. Uh, you don't want to lose to Georgia 41 to nothing. And right, you don't want to go 4-8 for the first time I'm in school history. I want to go through the phone. So, Tennessee did plenty of things I, last I, year. I don't want to. It's all very negative. I don't want to hear that anymore. Well, let's get to Jordan then. Jordan, good morning. Hey, man. Hey, this Jordan. Is, uh, Jordan's first-time caller, long-time listener. Oh, I actually man. met you one time. Uh, at Dead End, I was there for the uh, Orange and White game, and afterwards I met you at Dead End Barbecue. Oh, yeah, man. Suits out there. Thank you, man. Um, I appreciate you coming by. I, I remember. Yes, sir. Um, just a couple of comments. One, they've won two of the last four. I was actually there. Okay. Two two of we the last four. We got it out of two of the last four, not three. Two. It, because, it feels uh, like 2014, three. 2014, I was there at Vanderbilt, and uh, – I was actually sitting there with Jack Jones. It was, that's pretty cool. He came up and sat right beside me. And I was like, oh, my God, you know, you're Jack Jones. He's a crude at that time. Yeah. But uh, it, was, it was pretty cool. Anyways, Carney Barker, hearing y'all's description of it, it made me think of this movie I watched, I don't know, about a year ago called The Greatest Showman. Um, and uh, it's actually Hugh Jackman plays it. And so any time that you think of Butch Jones, if you have watched The Greatest Showman, just think Hugh Jackman. Or Jackman. It's called The Showman. I, the I, Greatest Showman. The I've Greatest Showman. That, yeah. Yeah. I've, heard I've heard a lot of people it's talk a, it's about a it. It's a musical. It's basically a musical. Is this on Netflix? 
I don't think it's on Netflix yet. Um, no. But it, it was a pretty cool movie. But anyways, anytime you think Butch Jones, just think Hugh Jackman on The Greatest Show. The Greatest Showman. I'm going to write that down. Check out the yep. reviews there. The Greatest Showman. The greatest Showman. All right, we got you. Yes, sir. Well, hey, y'all have a great Friday. Uh, it's nice to call in. I appreciate the phone call, man. Call back anytime. We want to hear from more of – uh, folks who listen but don't necessarily call, stop letting Turkey Man hog all the 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 phone line time, okay? And, and Andy, and Andy when he's awake, and Andy when he's awake, absolutely. We Swing. love we yeah. love the new callers. So call in anytime, please, please, Jordan. Thank you for uh, your time this morning. Eight six five two hundred fifty five zero three B Dry Waterproofing Hotline. Hour three powered by Low T Center and LowTCenter dot com. Man, do you know your numbers? Hour 3 of the Swain event is brought to you by the Low T Center and LowTCenter.com. Do you know your numbers? Feel like you again. Let us help. Top 100 barbecue restaurant Dead End Barbecue has a new slew of daily specials. Enjoy a different special meal every day, like the Chipotle chicken salad, the chicken tender sandwich, or the kitchen sink burrito filled with brisket, pulled pork, and chicken, not to mention queso, jalapenos, and more. It's called the kitchen sink for a reason. Dead End isn't stopping at your plate, though. Be sure to check out their new summer drink offerings, including the Big Orange Crush, My Clementine, or the Tequila Squirt. There is always something new at Dead End Barbecue. Located off of Sutherland Avenue, Dead End Barbecue. The summer flavor search is over. You're driving home, flashing blue lights in your rearview mirror. You pull over, step out of your car, and the next thing you know, you're being arrested for driving under the influence. Now what do you do? We all should be responsible. But remember, just because you're arrested doesn't mean you're guilty. Call criminal defense and DUI attorney Marcos Garza at 865-540-8300. The investigative teams at the Garza Law Firm know the justice system inside and out. They utilize cutting-edge technologies and investigative methods to prepare your specific case. Before you plead guilty to any criminal charges, call criminal defense and DUI attorney Marcos Garza. Put his number in your phone right now, 865-540-8300, because you never know when you or a friend will need it. Don't say guilty. Say Garza. 865-540-8300. 865-540-8300 and GarzaLaw.com. We have all made the mistake of dropping or breaking our smartphones. See? But did you know that you can have it repaired for a fraction of the cost that it takes to replace it? Well, you can. Because iDrop is the area's leading mobile repair store, home of the one hour or less phone repair, one year parts warranty, and number one customer service. Broken screens, cracked cameras, charging ports, batteries, you break it, we'll fix it. If you didn't break your phone, protect it with one of our leading accessories such as LifeProof, OtterBox, UAG, and Sipico, Caseology, and Spec. Visit our West Hills location at 7115 Kingston Pike, between Office Depot and Hardy's. Or call 865-888-9740 and speak with our trained technicians to see how we can get your phone working today. Insurance. Nobody likes surprises, so switch to Erie Rate Lock. Get a great rate that stays that way, even after an accident, ticket, or inflation. In fact, it's locked until you change a car, driver, or your address. Your Erie agent in Knoxville is in SureFit RM. Get a quote at 865-684-4900. That's 865-684-4900. Erie Rate Lock does not guarantee continued insurance coverage. It's not available in all states. JC's Tree and Landscaping Service specializes in quality tree work done at an affordable price. Trimming and removing trees are their specialty. They also offer other services like land clearing, stump grinding, crane services, and all of your basic landscaping needs for both commercial and residential. JC's will give you a free estimate and beat any written quote by a competitor to guarantee that you get the lowest price around. Don't risk your land with a fly-by-night service. JC's Tree and Landscaping is licensed and insured. Give them a call at 865-599-3799. At work, can't call in? Don't feel bad. 
you can talk to the guys on the text box. It's part of the free Swain event app. All right, let's get to uh, Fox Vol on the B-Drive Waterproofing Hotline, 8.50 a.m., 100.9 uh, FM, Rocky Top Sports, SwainEvent.com. Uh, and we are on the app, free for Android Apple We're devices. We're everything. Swain Event TV, driven by Toyota Knoxville and ToyotaKnoxville.com. Fox Vol, good morning. What's going on, Billy? Everything, man. Good morning. Yeah, happy Friday to everybody. Thank you, sir. Um, I got the orange cup. Awesome. No, man, awesome. appreciate it. You got that out real quick. No, thank you, man. Um, yeah, I love it. I love all the content. love the show. Um, glad to see some good people making it out there. Um, you know, I had a question about the uh, the medical stuff. <clears throat> you know, how they had all this shake-up and everything. Anything that kind of, that kind of uh, made, me, made me think about was uh, you, know, you had guys like... Uh, Devon Swamp, you know, he had a, a neck injury, I think it was, mm-hmm. and he was told that he could never play again, right? Mm-hmm. But then you look at a guy like Lothero McNeil, who was told the exact same thing, but then when he went out and got a second opinion, he was cleared to go. I think he was able to chuck his career. Didn't Rashawn Golden at one point also have something s- uh, similar? Well, yeah, I mean, he had, the, he had a foot that kept him out a long time. Oh, it was a foot. Right. Okay. Yeah. yeah I, but see, like, Lodero well, McDill, the initial diagnosis was that he would never be able to play again, right? Mm-hmm. Do you remember that? Yep. But then he went out and got a second opinion, and he finished out his career. So, I don't know. Yeah, yeah, Fox Ball and, um, man, put me in a bad spot. I'm sorry, dude. <laughs> <laughs> I'm over stirring the pot. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's a, it's a fair call. I mean, yeah. the Daryl McNeil wasn't the only one that that happened to. Right. Well, see, I wonder if guys like the Barnes Swafford, did they get a second opinion? You know, did he did he uh, go out and try to get another opinion? Because you know, what if he was just told that he was like, "Oh man, I can never play again." But what if he could have played? Yeah, the the thing I can, the thing I've said consistently uh, about our medical staff stuff is is uh, there need to be a, there need to be some adjustments. There need to be some changes there, and right. how we uh, rehab our players, uh, what procedures we were doing as opposed to not doing, and um, some of the practices that we decided not to do, but other schools in SEC. Were, were doing and are doing, um, there was a, a need to, to to make some drastic changes. And my experience wasn't wasn't terrible. It wasn't bad. Um, and so I think I had a, a pretty good experience there. So I'm not speaking because I have a bad experience and I'm, you know, I'm just – you know, bitter right. because that's even, that's 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 where people go. I mean, it's easy. That's easy to say no, for folks. No, no, I didn't. Uh, I didn't think that at all. Yeah, you said you got a second opinion. Yeah, I got. I got the exact same thing. Yeah, I got a second opinion. But when my mine was serious, and so you know, when you have a neck, when you have a knee, it's always smart to get a second opinion. The right. the, the problem is when you start questioning and getting a second opinion about everything, like when you could totally lose faith and trust in uh, what you're being told and what's going on, that's when you have a problem. And then when you look at the numbers of players out because of injury, and then you look at that over the last couple of years, and then you compare that to other teams in the SEC, it is glaring. It smacks you in the right. face. And 
you have to start looking at that stuff and you have to make changes. And the fact of the matter is that KOC is so entrenched in Tennessee football. It's been that way for decades and decades and decades. Um, and so that's why you still see the two physicians that replaced the other physicians that were let go. They're still part of KOC. They're just different guys. Um, and you know, so, I mean, go ahead. You look at guys like uh, Jack Jones, Cody Pope. You remember him? Yeah. What, yep. Terry Dooley said he was going to shove chicken and steaks down his throat. Well, <laughs> well, yeah. Well, Jack Jones had the the neck that you know he has to stop playing. He has stopped playing again. And and thanks for the phone call. Kind of you know, and that and that, those are serious cases where like I understand you don't want to mess with that. If you see something that can potentially be a problem for your university, you plan someone that if they get hurt or, or lose a life, it's on your watch. And that, that's a risk you don't want to take. I understand not clearing someone when it comes to that. But we're talking about – well, what I'm talking about, the changes that need to be made, we're, I'm more referring to, okay, here's an ankle. Here's a sprained ankle. There's different degrees of a sprained ankle. Let's make sure that he gets the right recovery time, that we're doing everything that we can to make sure that he heals and allow him to not hurt it more because you didn't handle it right at first. So I'll give you an example. I won't mention names. But we had a player. In the late 2000s, who sprained his ankle. It wasn't even a high ankle sprain. High ankle sprains are worse than a break. I had that. So we had a guy who had an ankle sprain. And instead of making sure that ankle was 100% and doing everything that we possibly could do to make sure it would not lead to other problems, an ankle injury turned into a torn Achilles. That's what you that's what you can't have. Or if you have you now I told a story about Robert Meacham. There's a difference between repairing a meniscus and taking it out. The recovery time is significantly different. You have to make a decision to take it out or leave it in and repair it. If you make the wrong decision, you're costing guys time to play. You're costing possibly a team. So those are decisions that have to be made. Um, also, if you have a guy with the injury, do you allow him to play through it, knowing that he can't hurt it more? Or do you elect to go ahead and operate right then? Because every time someone gets operated on, Somebody getting paid. You know what I'm saying? So sometimes you don't have to operate. Sometimes you can use some alternative practices, some alternative uh, techniques to help this young man be able to recover faster and recover the right way. And all these things need to be explored. All these things are kind of on the table. This is a tough spot because I don't want to throw anybody under the bus here. And I don't want to say anybody is bad because – there's a lot of people that have done a lot of really good things for Tennessee over a long period of time. But when you have some of these decisions that are made and it costs you a player for a season or half of the season or a spring or part of the summer, this affects the performance of your team. This, this affects you. And it's to a point – where it's not just an in-house, oh, we got this thing we got to deal with. It's to a point where other schools and other coaches and other folks know that Tennessee has a significant amount of players that have missed because of injury. And so you've changed your strength coach. You've changed the head coach. There's only one thing you have not changed. That is the medical staff. And so all the signs kind of point to, to, to them, and that's why I think Pruitt came in 
and made those changes. And that's why I said that Pruitt was a, was right for Tennessee because of those reasons. Because Derek Dooley didn't make any changes. Bush Jones didn't make any changes. And they came in and probably saw some of the same things that Pruitt saw. But they didn't make those changes. And you can come in and say, well, that may not affect me. I'm just going to recruit and develop and worry about that. No, that's, that can't affect you. A player getting hurt at the end of the season or playing through an injury through the season and the procedure that you decide to carry out on that young man in January determines if he's going to be back for the spring or not. He needs those 15 practices in the spring to develop. And if you have, and Pruitt said this at SC Media Days, there were 12 guys out spring. Mm-hmm. Did, did you not say a number around that? 29. 20, well, what? what he said, what he said, well, 12 media days with was injury 12. and then the 15 newcomers yeah. that weren't on campus. Exactly. Yet. So yeah, that's my bet. My bet. I mean, 12, that's a lot of guys out for the spring. A, that's, that's more than your starting lineup. <laughs> spring is very important for a new coach. 12 guys out. Yeah. 12. I mean, that is, that is a starting set of players. On exactly. The ball. Yeah. Trey Smith, you can't help. Some others, you have to ask yourself, we, how do you get better if you don't practice? You gotta, we got to get guys back on the football field. That's a, that's a lot of players out. There was one year after the 2004 season, we had more than 20 off-season surgeries. I mean, that's how it felt. Under, that's a that's a lot. That's how it felt under Bush Jones, not just back in your playing days. I mean, even I mean, if Kyle Phillips, it seems like he's had a surgery every single offseason. So many been injured. So many shoulder surgeries, cleanups of the knees. There's a player, a prominent player under Bush Jones that they told him to shut down for the year, and he went and got a second opinion. He was playing two weeks later. Correct, correct. So I mean. I'm really trying not to be really, you know, detailed and specific here because there's no reason to throw people under the bus, but a change needed to be made. And um, hopefully that's something that we can correct moving forward and get our guys healthy. You can recruit all day long. You can have the best scheme. You can have all the money from the boosters and the donors and build nice stadiums. You can do all that stuff. You can have the number one recruiting class each and every year. But if you got 12 guys out every year for spring and you got, you know, 12 or 15 starters out during the season, it don't matter. Yeah, you can you can sign the players, but <laughs> if the players don't play, yeah. what does it matter? <laughs> it don't matter. It just doesn't. Yeah. And that's why it's so hard to win in college football <laughs> because you got to have all these things right. you got to have your academic staff on point. they got to make sure guys are eligible, going to class, doing everything right because you can lose players that way. And then you have to make sure that your strength and conditioning staff is right because if you want to have this power offense – then you got to make sure that a guy like Jordan Allen uh, and this, you know, this bigger guys on defense, you got to make sure that he is gaining weight the right way, gain thirty pounds. Waking up at two a.m. to eat a peanut butter jelly sandwich. Yeah, you know, Eli Wolf talking about, you know, he's not eating because he's hungry or satisfaction. He's eating eating because it's a job. So you got to have that taken care of, because if you can have the best rehab, but if you're not flexible, you're not strong, you're going to get hurt too. And then you got to have your medical staff together. And then your coaches together. So you just, there's so many factors that and, play into this. Administration. Yeah, like it's hard to win. Which makes what Nick Saban has been able to do at Alabama even more incredible when you Correct. think of all the factors it takes. Correct. Goes into winning Everyone, that championship. Everyone's on the same page. And it, it makes me happy that Tennessee got a guy that knows how to do all those things. Or maybe not knows how to do it all just yet, but has seen he knows it what, work. He knows what it looks like, and yes. he's not afraid to let you go if you're not part of the equation. Yep. And it doesn't matter how long you've been here or who your mama is and how tight you are or how much money you've given to the, to the university. or It doesn't matter. You're either part of the championship equation or you're not. And I like that someone is coming in here without any prior relationships and it's all about just winning and doing what needs to be done. And that's going to rub people the wrong way at first. But winning cures all. And the sooner we can do that, the better. Hope you have a great weekend. Swain event fueled by Dead End Barbecue. Live from the Low T Center studio. Ben McKee, Charlie Burris. 
I'm Jason Swain. Peace and love. Tell someone how great they are today. Make their day. Have a good weekend. Hour three of the Swain event is brought to you by the